The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Read. For I bear them record. He said that them is Israel. He says, I bear Israel record that what? That they might, that they have a zeal of God. You ever see a lot of people in the Christian church? They have a zeal. They say, I love God. I love, you see the black men be crying up in there. But they have a zeal of God, but what? But not according to knowledge. And that's the problem. They have a zeal of God, but it's not according to knowledge. It's not according to as it is written. It's according to their feelings. Exactly how we started this class. He said, don't lean on your own understanding. But our people in the Christian church, they believe in God according to their own feelings. It's not according to knowledge, but it's according to feelings. So it's a feelings-based doctrine. You understand? It's not a Bible-based, it's a feelings-based. All praise to the Most High. Brothers and sisters online, shalom to you all. Most High, Christ bless you. Happy Sabbath. We made it to another Sabbath day, man. Let's give the Lord a hand, man. All praise. All praise to the Most High. We made it to another Sabbath day. Okay, I don't want to see sad faces up in here, man. Okay, all praise to the Most High. Let's get that. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Let's begin. Let's read that verse again. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. He says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Come on. And lean not unto thine own understanding. So you must trust in the Lord and don't lean on your own understanding. Your own understanding is your feelings. Okay, that's what this is talking about. Now hold this. Give me Proverbs 28 now. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28 verse 26. The Lord says, don't trust in your own heart. You understand? But you must trust in the Lord. Trust in him. Not in, the, not in your own heart. Not in your own feelings, but in the Lord, the Most High God of heaven and earth. Okay, read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 26. Read. He that trusted in his own heart is a fool. You hear what the Bible is saying? He that trusted his own heart is a fool. That's why the Lord says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Because if you trust not in the Lord, the Lord says you are a fool. Read that again. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 26. Read. He that trusted in his own heart is a fool. He is a fool. Come on. But whoso walketh wisely. But whoso walketh wisely. Come on. He shall be delivered. He shall be delivered. So now, let's see why the Lord says, don't trust in your own heart. Get that in Jeremiah 17, verse 9. This is why the Lord says, don't trust in your own feelings. Because a lot of the times we are unable or we, we are scared to do certain things to glorify the Lord in this truth. Because we are caught up in our feelings. The most high God don't care about how you feel. He cares what you do. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. That's what we want, right? Get it? The book of Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. This is the reason why the Lord says don't trust in your own heart. Come on. The heart is deceitful above all things. That's why. That's why the Lord says don't trust in your heart because your heart is deceitful. The Lord says your heart is deceitful above all things. Come on. And desperately weak. And the, your heart is desperately wicked. So the Lord says, don't follow your heart. Because you hear that all the time. In the movies, you understand? They say, no, follow your heart, follow your dreams. No, 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 that's not in the Bible. The Lord is letting you know, do not follow your heart. You follow what the Bible says, that says the Lord as it is written. Go ahead. The heart is deceitful above all things. Come on. And desperately wicked. And desperately wicked. Come on. Who can know? Who can know it? The Lord knows your heart. Come on. And I the Lord. And we're going to see how the Lord knows our heart. Because you hear that a lot in the Christian church. No, the Lord knows my heart. The Lord knows my heart. Not my Jesus. Not my Jesus. The Lord knows my heart. That's not in the Bible, man. The Lord is telling you, do not follow your own heart. Your heart will deceive you to do something evil. Okay, read. I, the Lord, search the heart. So the Lord says he searches our hearts, our thoughts. Read. I try the rain. He says he tries, he tests your thought process, the way you think. Is the way you think according to what the Bible says, or is the way you think according to how you feel? Read. In to give every man according to his way. So if your ways don't please the Lord, the Lord is going to judge you harshly. Because you don't follow the what he's saying, you follow your heart. That means you're your own God. You understand? You break in the first commandment that says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Read. And according to the fruit of his doing. You see that? So now, watch this. Give me that in um, 
Give me Mark. Mark 7. Let's get it. Mark 7, verse 21. Let's see what's in the what the Lord says. Don't trust your heart. Why is the Lord saying that? This is Christ speaking, by the way. Because they say, no, the Lord knows my heart, not my Jesus. Let's see what Jesus says in the Bible. You understand? About your heart. Read it. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Come on. For from within, out of the heart of men. Out of the heart of men, meaning the thoughts of men, men and women. Read. Proceed evil thoughts. That's why it says, don't trust your heart. If you trust upon your own heart, the Lord says you are a fool because in your mind, this is what's in your mind. Okay, read that again. For from the book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 21. Come on. For from within, out of the heart of men. Out of the heart of men. Proceed evil thoughts. Proceed evil thoughts. So the Lord says don't trust your heart because your heart has evil thoughts. Read. Adultery. You see, that's what's in the mind. Adultery. Go ahead. Fornication. Fornication. Madness. Madness. Hatred also. So because you find you, you hate your brother, but you don't know why. Because your heart is evil. You understand? Because that's what, if you, the, the, without the Bible, your mind is evil. You can, when you hear, no, that brother has a good heart, does he keep the commandments? No, he's evil. That sister has a good heart. You know, he's such, she's such an angel. Does she keep the commandment? No, she's evil, man. There's no two ways about it. You understand? It's not based on what you see. It's what they do. Read on. Come on. Theft. Theft. You know, stealing. Go ahead. Covetousness. Covetousness. Go ahead. Wickedness. Wickedness. Read. Deceit. Deceit. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. Come on. An evil eye. An evil eye. Looking at your brother sideways or your sister sideways with an evil eye. Read on. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Come on. Pride. Mm -hmm. Foolishness. Foolishness. Come on. All these things. Oh, no, no, no. Read that right. Come on. Verse 23 all, again. The book of Mark, chapter 7, verse 23. Come on. All these evil things. All these what? All these evil things. All these evil things we just read. Where do they come from? Come from within. They come from within your mind. Your mind. Come on. And defile the man. They destroy you. That's why God says don't trust your own heart because your heart is full of these things. Your, everybody's mind is full of these things. Don't sit there and say, no, not me. Not, no, no, the minute you say that, you the devil the Bible speaks of. Because then that's talking to you. The Lord is letting you know in everybody's mind, this is the things that is in everybody's mind. To get rid of these things, you need to apply the laws of God. That's the only way to get rid of these things. You will not get rid of these things by yourself, by revelation, like they say in the Christian church. It's not going to happen, man. You must apply yourself. That's what the Bible is saying. So go back to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3 and 5. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Read. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You see, that's why it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Read. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding. To lean on your own understanding means to trust yourself. God says, don't trust yourself. Don't lean. When you, because when you lean against the wall, you know the wall might not fall. You don't know if it will fall. It might not. It might, it might not. But when you lean against the wall, you trust in that, you know what, I'm not going to fall. So, guess what? We must lean on this. Don't lean on your feelings. Lean on the Bible. Okay? Give me that in Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Man. Okay. Hebrews 11 verse 21. Listen good. This is what you must lean on. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 21. Come on. By faith. By what? By faith. By faith. By faith. Come on. Jacob. Uh -huh. When he was a, when he was a dying. When he, our forefather Jacob when he was about to die. What, what happened? Blessed both the sons of Joseph. This is Ephraim and Manasseh. Go ahead. And worship. Leaning upon the top of his staff. He was leaning upon the top of his staff. You ever see old men? They walk with a cane. They walk with a stick. That's what our forefather Jacob was here. He was an old man. So he was leaning on the top of his staff when he was blessing the sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh, while he was leaning on the top of his staff. But this also is a metaphor. You understand? He was leaning on the top of his staff. Uh, read Proverbs 29 verse 15. We're going to read that one first. The book of Proverbs chapter 29 verse 15. Mm -hmm. The rod and reproof give wisdom. The rod and reproof give wisdom. Come on. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Read that again. The rod and reproof. The what now? The rod and reproof give uh -huh. wisdom. He says the rod and reproof give wisdom. Come on. But a child left to himself 
bringing his mother to shame. Because the rod is a staff, it's a stick. You understand? It's supposed to correct. So what's supposed to correct you? The laws of God. The Bible is what corrects you. Okay? So now when, when it says leaning upon the top of his staff, that staff is the rod, which is this. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Give me that in Psalms 23. Read that. Psalm 23. Yeah, because Psalms chapter 23, verse 4. Come on. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? The valley of the shadow of death is slavery. Though we are in slavery, come on. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Come but on. Thou art with me. For the Lord is with us. Come on. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort. Thy rod and thy what? Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So the rod is for correction, the staff is for support. So the Bible is what supports us. You understand? The Bible is what supports us. So go back to Proverbs 3 verse 5. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Come on. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Come on. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding. Read. In all thy ways mm. acknowledge it. Do what? In all thy ways acknowledge it. Read. And he shall direct thy path. So the Lord is saying in all our ways we must acknowledge him. We must acknowledge the Lord God of heaven and earth in everything we do. All praises to the Most High. Come on. It shall be held to thy, to thy neighbor mm. and marrow to thy bone. You see that? The laws of God. That's what they will do to you. That's what they will do for you. Now, watch this. So today's topic is called... Yes. So today's topic is called Fairy Tales and Delusions of Christianity. That's today's topic. Fairy tales and delusions of Christianity. That is, today I'm chastening the Christian church. I'm coming for them this day. You understand? Read that again. Proverbs 3 verse 5. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Read. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Come and, on. And lean not unto thine own understanding. And don't lean on your own understanding. Read. In all thy ways, Ray. acknowledge it. Acknowledge the Lord, come on. And he shall direct thy path. So now, this is what I like in the prayer. Give me Psalms 101. Psalms 101, read verse 3. Let's start there. Psalms 101, verse 3. The book of Psalms, chapter 101, verse 3. Ray. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Come on. I hate the work of them that turn aside. You stop right there. The Lord says what? This is King David speaking here. Read again. What did he say? I hate the work of them that turn aside. When you turn aside from this Bible, the Lord says he hates you. You don't start keeping the commandment and you stop keeping the The Lord says he hates your guts. There's no such thing that God loves you no matter what. That is not in the Bible. That's, a, that's another Christianity fairy tale and a delusion. That God loves me no matter what. That is not in the Bible. Read that verse again. The book of Psalms, chapter 101, verse 3. Read. I will set no wicked thing before mine eye. Go ahead. I hate the work of them that turn aside. Turn aside into what? Into sin. They go back into, into the world. You understand? Read. And shall not cleave to me. Read. A proud heart shall depart from me. Read. I will not know a wicked person. Now, the Lord, this is King David speaking in the spirit. Because the most High God says he hates them that turn aside. So there's no such thing that God loves me no matter what. That is not in the Holy Bible. You understand? Proverbs 8 verse 17. Proverbs 8 verse 17. Listen good. The book of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17. Come on. I love them that love me. Stop right there. Read it again. I love them that love me. God says he loves them that love him. So those that love the Lord is those that the Lord loves. Those that turn aside from this Bible, they stop keeping the commandments, is those that the Lord hates. Read again, verse 17. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 17. Come on. I love them that love me. Read. And those that seek me early shall find me. You see that? And those that seek me early shall find me. So there's no such thing that God loves me no matter what. That is not in the Holy Bible. God says he loves them that love him. How do we love the Lord? First John 5 and 3, let's get that. First John chapter 5, verse 3. He says, I love them that love me. Come on. First John 5 and 3. First book of John chapter 5 and 3. Come on. For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God. Come on. 
that we keep his commandments. You see what it means to love the Lord? To keep his commandments. So God says he loves them that keep his commandments. So those that despise his commandments, they don't keep them. God says he hates them. So God hates. There's no such thing that God loves me no matter what. There's no such thing in the Bible. Okay? So go back to Proverbs 8 verse 17. The book of Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17. Pray. I love them that love me. Come on. And those that seek me early shall find me. So now, let's get into it. Let's get into the topic now. Fairy tales and delusions of Christianity. That's today's topic. On this glorious day, the Sabbath day. The Lord is blessing us with the rain, man. All praises to the Lord for that thing. Now, um, let's start with the first one. So there's a couple of points I want to hit regarding the fairy tales and the delusions that are taught by the Christian church to our people to bewitch them. You understand? Because our people are bewitched. Papa Loyal and the Christian, I'm telling you straight up. They have been bewitched. And let me tell you, witchcraft works, by the way. If you don't keep the commandments, witchcraft works. Some of you don't believe that witchcraft, witchcraft, yes, it works. If you don't keep the laws of God, you are going to be bewitched. Whether in the Christian church or, Rama, or uh, the, the, the witch doctor sitting in some corner somewhere. He's going to bewitch you. You understand? Let, let's get that in the book of Numbers. Man. Numbers. Numbers 23, 23. Okay, come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 23. Come on. Show sure. There is no enchantment against Jacob. There is no enchantment against Jacob. Enchantment is witchcraft. God says there is no way bewitching. Any of the children of Israel cannot be bewitched if we keep the laws of God. Read. Neither is there any divination against Israel. There is no divination against Israel. Read. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what has gone wrong. So now, what you want to understand is that if you don't keep the laws of God, you are going to be bewitched. As of lawyer. But you're not, when you keep the laws of God, you are not loyable. You are un, you are unloyable. If that's even a word, you are unbewitchable. You understand? Nobody can bewitch you, man. Nobody can go to a, a witch doctor and you know do some booty on you. It won't work. But if you don't keep the laws of God, that, why do you think our people in the world they are also obsessed with going to um, to see someone? You understand? They say, no, somebody is bewitching me. Let me go and visit. Let me go consult. Why do you think they go and consult? Because they are not keeping the laws of God. So that's why it's easy for them to get bewitched. That's why when they're looking for a job, they go and see a Sangoma. You understand? They say, no, the Sangoma gave me this thing so that I can get the job. I can ace the interview. And when they're at the job, they are always carrying something, whether it's on their waist, you understand? They're always wearing a string. It's got some things inside of it. You understand? They say, no, this thing is going to help me to keep my job. You understand? That's witchcraft, man. That's, that's idolatry. So that's why our people are obsessed with that thing. Because they are not keeping the laws of God. They are obsessed with some bombers and amadros. Understand that? You understand? So now, give me the book of Isaiah 8, verse 19. Because... Um, our people are so obsessed with the Amadros, whenever you go over there, they get offended. Let's offend, let me offend you even more. Watch this. Give me that in Isaiah 8. Isaiah chapter 8, read verse 18. Start there. Chapter 8, verse 18. Watch this. Behold, I and the children, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Because the same thing that the Lord did with Hosea in Hosea 1, would you use the children as signs to judge Israel? He did the same thing with the children of Isaiah. Go ahead. From the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Read. And when they when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirit. You see, they seek unto them that have familiar spirit. You know when you go and see some woman, but you blow in the in the basket. You understand? You blow in the basket. They say, What are you agreeing to? <laughs> what are you agreeing to, man? You agree to be bewitched. You say, Nyavuma, I agree to be bewitched. Go ahead. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that are familiar spirit. When it says familiar spirit, it means that they will say, you see, this bone is your grandfather. He's angry. 
your grandfather began to push one man in it. You say, yes, you say, you see? Yeah, that's a familiar spirit because that spirit is familiar to you. You know your grandmother. You know your grandfather. You understand? So when they talk about them at the Sangoma, the Sangoma don't know your father, don't know your grandmother and what not. They, and they talk about them. You say, you see, I, they must be good then. How do they know my grandmother? You understand? Because these people are what? They're dealing with witchcraft. Right? And and to wither that peep. They peep. They peep in that bag. You see that bag that has bones and whatnot? That's the peep. That's the, the, the wizards. They peep in the bag. They check. They say, blow in it, you blow. Go ahead. And unto wither that peep. Mm. And that matter. You see that? When they say, <laughs> <laughs> that's, them, that, that, that's them muttering up there. You understand? There's a wizard that people matter. Read. Should not a people seek unto their God? Now the Lord is coming back. He's asking the question. Should not the people seek unto their God? Because what, what did he command us? Hold this. We're coming back. Uh, give me that in... Um, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about something else. Exodus 20, man. Give me the first commandment. Should not a people seek unto their God? This is how you seek unto your God. Read them. Then from Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. Now this is the first commandment. Read. Thou shall have no other gods before me. That's why it says, Should not the people seek unto their God? So go back. Isaiah 8 verse 19. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 19. Read. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar speak, mm -hmm. and unto wizards that peep. Those sangomas that peep, go and, ahead. And that matter. Because sometimes you need Because when we were growing up, ne, you know, our grandfathers, they were so obsessed with sangomas, man. You understand? Some of them, they even had a place, your pasha, that all the families will come together and meet at that place every year. That's what they do. You know what that thing is? That's the altar of Bayal. That right there is the altar of Bayal because then all the families, their fathers, their mothers, their grandfathers, their grandchildren, they say, no, so that's what they say. They say all the families must come together. We're going to go to that place. So, so, slaughtering Bozi, Nanani, and whatnot. You know what they are doing? They are worshipping Bayal. That's the, and then, but there's a place of Pasha, somewhere in the corner, somewhere. So it's never clean. It's some dating or some place. You understand? That's the altar of Bayal. We all know this thing, man. We used to follow these customs of the Egyptians. Okay? Go ahead. Read. And when they shall say unto you, Read. Seek unto them that are familiar spirit. Come on. And unto wizard that peep. And unto wizard that peep. Come and, on. And that matter. Mm. Should not a people seek unto their God? What's this? For the living to the dead. For the living to the dead. Because why? The most High God is a living God. He's not Buddha. Buddha is a statue. He's not Allah. Allah is a black rock in Mecca. You understand? He's not Krishna. The most high God of heaven and earth, he is a living God. He made us. Buddha didn't make anything. What did Buddha make? Nothing. What did Allah make? Nothing. But these other nations, they worship those gods. Guess what? Our people also, they're doing the same thing. Mark 12, 27. Read that. This is Jesus Christ speaking. Listen good. Start of verse 26. The book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 26. Read. And as touching the day. As touching the day. Come on. Day that rise. Have not read in the book of Moses mm. how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham. You see that even in the New Testament, Christ is letting you know the most high God has never been the God of all nations. Read. And the God of Isaac. And the God of our forefather Isaac. Come on. And the God of Jacob. So you see, so God has never been the God of all nations. Even Christ is letting you know. You understand that the most high God of heaven and earth is the God of the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. He is not the God of the dead. That's it right there. The most high, he is not the God of the dead. So when you see people saying, I'm my ancestors and whatnot, and none, mm -mm, listen, he's not the God of the dead. When you dead, you dead. Unless if you were keeping the commandments, you was righteous, you talk to the most high God in heaven, up there where the Lord is. But those that were doing evil, they were practicing, you know, this much laws, he sings and gomas and what, they don't speak to the Lord. They do not speak to the, they are dead, they are sleeping. Okay, read. He is not the God of the dead. He is not the God of the dead. But the God of the living. You see that? But the God of the living. Come on. He therefore do greatly err. You greatly err when you trust in the dead, because they are dead. 
You cannot, there's no, there's no wisdom in the grey. Where's that? Ecclesiastes? Let's get that. You, there's no wisdom in the grey. You understand? Because you see our people going to, uh, we're not saying, the Bible doesn't say don't go to the cemetery. You can go to the cemetery and clean around the weeds that are around the, you know, the, the, um, the thingy, your, the tombstone and whatnot. But you don't bow down there and talk. Who are you talking to? Because when they are die, when they die, the spirit go up to the most high, and they are sleeping. So basically, you bow down to that dumb stone. That's what you're doing. You understand? Ecclesiastes nine. Ecclesiastes nine, verse ten. Watch this. Listen good. Ecclesiastes chapter nine, verse ten. Listen up. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do. Mm -hmm. Do it with thy mind. He says, do it with your mind. Come on. For there is no work. There is no work. No divine. No plan. No knowledge. No understanding. No wisdom. No wisdom. In the grave. Mm -hmm. Whither thou goest. Exactly. There is no wisdom in the grave, man. There is no work that you can do when you are dead. There is nothing you can do. You're dead. You're done. You understand? You're waiting for the regeneration when the Lord is sending you back. To do evil as you continue to do evil or to do good as you were doing good before. That's it. You understand? So, he's not the God of the day, but the God of the living. Give me that. Go back to Mark 12. Mark 12, 27. The Mark chapter 12, verse 27. Read it. The book of Mark chapter 12, verse 27. Come on. He is not the God of the dead. He's not the God of the dead. Come on. But the God of the living. But the God of the living. Read. He therefore do greatly err. You see that? So, our people today, they are worshipping the dead. But the God is not the... He's not the God of the dead. Man. He's the God of the living. You understand? I'm going to prove to you that our forefathers that were keeping the commandments, they are speaking to the Lord today. They are not dead. You understand? They are in another realm where the most God of heaven and earth is. I'm going to prove that. Give me Matthew 17. Matthew chapter 17. Yeah, Matthew 17. Um, read verse 1. Listen good. Because remember, this is the New Testament, right? Now, I want you to pay close attention here. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 1. Watch this. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, mm -hmm. bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. Watch this. And was transfigured. He was taken up. When he says he was transfigured, he was taken up in a chariot. Read. And was transfigured before them. Mm -hmm. And his face did shine as the sun. His face did shine as the sun. He had wisdom, man. Come on. And his raiment was white as the light. Watch this. Come on. And behold. There appeared unto, unto them Moses. And Whoa, stop right there. Wait, wait, wait. This is the New Testament. What, 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 what appeared unto Peter, James, and John? The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 3. Watch this. And behold, mm. there appeared unto them Moses. Mo wait, I thought Moses was there. So where does Moses come from? This is the New Testament during the time of Christ. How come Moses just show, show up? Where is, where is he coming from? I thought Moses was dead in Deuteronomy. When he was dead and buried. So why is Moses showing up here? Because he's not the God of the dead. But the dead, the God of the living. You understand that? Read. And Elias. Stop right there. Elijah. Mm -hmm. So Elijah right here. Because you remember. And you know another thing. Elijah was taken up in a chariot. right? Elijah didn't die. But Elijah came. As John the Baptist. His head was cut off. Now all of a sudden. Wait a minute. Elias is here. Read. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias mm -hmm. talking with him. Stop. So Moses and Elijah. You have Moses representing the law and Elijah representing the prophets. You understand? That's why they are showing up. But they are not dead. Because the righteous never die. The righteous never die, man. You see, now we keep in the commandments like this. You get shot. You understand? Listen, man. Up there when you are with the Lord, you're not dead. You are up. You are, you are walking like we're walking like this. Let me show you. Give me Isaiah 57 and 1. I didn't want to go there, but I want to go there. Because I know there's a brother or sister right now calling himself Ukoko. You cannot make this stuff up, man. You have men calling themselves Ukoko. Hmm? Now read the Bible, man. I don't understand these things, man. I don't get it. Ukoko, we know which it was an old granny. Now all of a sudden... You have men that calling themselves Ukoko. Now read the Bible for me. The book of Isaiah, chapter 57, verse 1. Watch this. The righteous patient 
and no man layeth it to heart. You see that is that the righteous die and no man layeth it to heart. When he said layeth it to heart, they don't really think about it. Or what happens to the righteous when they die? Is that what that's why it says no man layeth it to heart. They don't really think deep about it. Read. And merciful men are taken away. Because those merciful men is the righteous men that get taken away. Come on. None consider. And nobody is considering go ahead, that the righteous that the, these righteous men and women come on is taken away they are taken away from the evil to come they are, they are taken away from the evil that's coming the evil that's coming is the death and destruction that's going to come on this earth go ahead he shall enter into peace wait he's dead he shall enter into peace he's going to enter into peace go ahead they shall rest in their bed. They're going to what now? They shall rest in their bed. Because right there you may think, oh, they are sleeping. Now keep reading. Each one. Each one. Walking. Wait, I thought they were dead. Each one walking in his uprightness. So they are walking. Literally, up there in the heavens with the Lord. They are not dead. So the righteous don't die, man. They just get translated from one realm to another. That's it. That's why Moses showed up during the time of Christ. Elijah showed up during that time. But Elias was taken up during those days of the book of Kings. So thousands of years later, here comes Moses. Here comes Elijah. You understand? So there was a brother who came to camp when we were teaching in Macedonia. And he was saying, yeah, but you know, Pella, the, the reason why we talk to the ancestors is because God can talk to the ancestors. And he used um, the story of uh, Cain and Abel. You understand? So he says, no, but God was talking to Abel, so therefore we can talk to the dead. I'm like, what? God talked to Abel, so you can, you, we like God, so we can do it also. You see, that's how they justify it. Because they don't want to admit that they are breaking the first commandment that says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'm going to show you why God was talking to Abel, and when and Abel was dead. Give me the book of Genesis 4. Give me Genesis 4 real quick. The reason why I'm going over here is because we were reading in Isaiah 8 verse 19 that thou shall have not be going to these Sangomas and worshipping Amagos. Now give me Genesis 4. Genesis chapter 4. Uh, read verse, verse 8. The book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 8. Watch this. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. Uh -huh. And it came to pass. When they were in the view, mm. that Cain rose up against every brother and slew him. So he killed his brother. Now watch the next verse. Come on. And the Lord said unto Cain, mm -hmm. Where is Abel thy brother? Where is your brother, man? Read. And he said, mm -hmm. I know not. He says, I don't know. Number one, he's lying. You see the first thing he just did? He just lied. Read. Am I my brother's keeper? You see, again, being disrespectful, he's not talking to the Lord with reverence. He's because, remember... A Cain was used to disrespecting his parents. So now when the Lord shows up on the scene, he's disrespecting the Lord also because he's used to doing this. Read. And he said, what hast thou done? What have you done, Cain? Come on. The voice of thy brother's blood. He says, the voice of your brother's blood. Who's dead? Come on. Crieth unto me from the ground. He says, I um, can hear the voice of your brother's blood crying unto me from the ground. Read. And now, and now art thou cast from the earth. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, now watch this. So what we're reading here is the Lord is talking to Abel. Cain just killed his brother Abel, but the Lord is talking to him. How? Let's read it. Give me the book of Hebrews. Go back there. Go back to the book of Hebrews. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11. Read verse 4. Hebrews 11 and 4. Watch this. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. Come on. By faith, uh -huh. Offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. So Abel offered a more, sec a, a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. That means our forefather Abel had faith. This is what you need to understand. He says he had, a, he had faith. Why did he offer a more excellent sacrifice than Cain? Be by faith. Wait a minute. By what? By faith. So what did he know? Our forefather Abel. He knew that, give me Hebrews 11 and 1. Yeah, no, Hebrews 10 and 1, quickly. I'm going to show you what our forefather Abel knew back then. This is what he knew. Watch this, come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1. Watch this. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come. What law is this? The law of animal sacrifice. The law had a shadow of the good things to come. Meaning the law of animal sacrifice was for us to practice for the, second, for the coming of Christ. 
not the second coming, but the birth of the Messiah who was going to do away with sacrifices of animals. Right? And not the very image of the thing. Because during that time, Christ was not born yet. Right? Can never with those sacrifices. With those what? With those sacrifices. Go ahead. Which they offered year by year continually. Make the comers the unto perfect. So now, the law of animal sacrifice was a shadow of things to come. So when our forefathers back then were sacrificing animals when there was sin involved, when they committed iniquity and sin and transgressions, they offered an animal, you understand, to get forgiveness for their sins. So why did they do it? Why did we do animal sacrifice back then? It's because it was a shadow of things to come. We're practicing for the what? For the sacrifices that the Lord was going to do. So what did Cain, what did Abel, our brother, understand? Who did he put his trust in? Who did he trust on? The Messiah. So our forefather Abel understood this already from that time. Why we were sacrificing, man. So he had faith in the Messiah. He understood that the reason why we're doing this is for the shadow of things to come. You understand that? You understand? Okay, go back to Hebrews 11, verse 4 again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 4. Read. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Watch this. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. He was righteous. Go ahead. Watch this. God testifying of his gifts. Of his gifts. Read. And by it, he being dead. By it, that gift, that sacrifice that our forefather Abel gave. Go ahead. And by it, he being dead. Meaning Abel being dead. Watch this. What happened? Yet speaking. Yet speaking. So why was Abel, our brother, was able to speak to the Lord? Because Abel was righteous. Only the righteous talk to the Lord. Not your wicked grandmother that was performing witchcraft, big, big, baking her days. No. She don't talk to the Lord. She's asleep right now. Your evil grandfather who used to practice witchcraft, selling people like me. You understand? He don't talk to the Lord. He don't talk to the Lord in any wise. He's been going around with a broom. You understand? Because they've been showing, you know that thing, Sabrina, the teenage witch? Yeah. So all of that, that's, witch, that's all witchcraft. You understand? Because there's places in South Africa where they say, you see that place, if you want to buy lightning, go over there. You understand? Yep. There's places in Mzanzi for sure where they can say, if you want the voodoo stuff, go over there. They'll give you the voodoo medication. But so for some reason, they don't make medication to heal the people. No, they make medication to what? To plague the people with sins, with, with uh, diseases and plagues and all manner of evil things they do to the people. Read the Bible again, verse 4, Hebrews 11. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 4. Read. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Come on. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Mm. God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaking. You see that? He being dead because Abel was righteous. Abel was a righteous man. He kept the commandments of the Most High God of heaven and earth. Now go back to Isaiah 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Uh, read verse um, 19 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 19. Come on. And when they shall say unto you, speak unto them that have familiar spirits. Read. And unto wizards that peep. And unto wizards that peep. Come on. And that matter. That matter. Should not a people seek unto their God. Read. For the living to the dead. For the living to the dead. Because he's not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. That's why he was able to talk to Abel. Because Abel was righteous. That's why... You understand, Peter, James, and John, they were righteous. They were able to speak to what? They were over, they saw Moses and Elias because they were righteous. That's why they were able to see them. They were able to see them speak to Christ because they were righteous, Peter, James, and John, and they were here on earth. They saw Moses and Elijah. That's some heavy stuff, man. Now, go back to Leviticus 18 because, you know, our people, they love this Madrosi business. That's why I just had to touch on it because I know our people are very sensitive when it comes to stuff like this. There's a TikTok video that is out, right, about the Madrosi. You know how many, how many comments are on there? You know, the, the, the amount of insults they give us. 
because they are so offended that we're correcting them. So stop bowing down to, uh, you know, worshipping Sangomas and Majo. They get upset about that. You understand? So, um, Leviticus 20. Yeah, Leviticus chapter 20. Read verse 6. Watch this. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 verse 6. Come on. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits. So the Lord, this is a commandment now. It says, anybody, a man or woman, that turn after what? Them that have familiar spirits. Meaning what? Your brother next to you, they have a familiar spirit. They like to go and visit among some woman in the night. Right? And after wizards. And after wizards. You are some woman's. They, you ever see these people, they like to spend money on some gomas. You know them, ne? They're always spending money on some gomas. All of a sudden, but they're wearing this thing. But is panda, ne? Is that what it's called? Uh -huh. Yes, we see them, pal. Sometimes you find it's so big, and God, they're wearing a whole goat. You understand? You ask yourself, why do you have this? Because why? Idolatry. Breaking the first commandment. And our people get upset about this. You know why they get upset? Because the Lord is cutting them in the spirit. That's why they get upset when you tell them about it. They say, no, but that's my tradition. What type of tradition is this? Where you speak to people that don't hear you. What type of tradition is this one? Hmm? You understand? When you say they say, no, but you know the Bible is a white man's book. All of a sudden, the Bible is a white man's book. Hold that. Give me Song of Solomon 1 and 5. Let's see if the Bible is a white man's book. Because the minute when you, teach, when you tell them that they say, no, but you're following white people. Mm -mm, the Bible is not the book of white people. The Bible is the book of the Israelites. Black people up in here. Now read the Bible form. Song of Solomon 1 and 5. Let's see if the Bible is a book of white people. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Read. I am black. No, it's a book of white people. I am black. I am what? I am black. Read. But come, mm -hmm. O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Read. As the tents of Kadar. Come on. As the curtains of Solomon. Read. Look not upon me, because I am black. Stop. So, the Bible is not a book of white people. They will only take you there because they re realizing that they are losing the argument. Now all of a sudden they're like, mm, no, it's a book of white people. You're listening to white people too much. White people have colonized us using the Bible. Hold on a second. The Bible is a book of black people. God is black. They love that. Christ is black. They love that. The minute you say, okay, now you need to stop worshiping, worship, going to some monk, some gomas and worshiping a madras. They say, you see, now we have a problem. All of a sudden, now they don't believe in the Bible anymore. Why? Because they don't want to let go of that idol that they worship. You understand that? So, go back to Leviticus 20, verse 6 again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 6. Read. And the soul that tenant after such as a familiar spirit. Because one thing I want to understand is that even in the, in the Christian church, because in the Christian church, the pastor will not tell you don't worship Sangomas. Because they go there. You know these pastors, they visit these Sangomas. We know that. They visit Sangomas. They, they bring, um, they bring um, Umuti in the church. At the pulpit. Yes, they do. Some of them had a pig underneath the pulpit. They say it brings people in. They head of a pig. They say it's underneath where the pastor stands. There's a pig underneath there. That's why people be coming in. You understand? Read. And the soul that turneth after such as a familiar spirit. Watch this. And after wizards. And after wizards. To go a whoring after them. So Ngulungulu says, don't go favoring after these uh, uh, these other gods. Because when you go to Sangomas, you will fail. Yes, yeah, spiritually. In your spirit, we are whoresha. That's what you're doing. Read. I will even set my face against that soul. God says he's going to set his face against you. Meaning what? He don't know you. The same way he set his face against Cain, he's going to set his face against you. Read. And will cut him off from among his people. The Lord says, I'm going to kill you. That's what God is That's what God is saying. I know some people don't believe it. Now, right now, I'm sure that little is burning right now. You're getting hot. It's like, yeah, you know, that mic must go off again. It's not going to go off this time. Keep reading. Sanctify yourselves, therefore. So the Lord says, sanctify yourself, therefore, meaning cleanse yourself. Go ahead. And be ye holy. And be ye holy. Come on. For I am the Lord your God. Read. And ye shall keep my statutes. Ye shall what now? Them. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. You shall keep my statutes and do them. Now, watch this. You know the reason why you see our people, some of them, they be wearing like um, the horn of a, the horn of a, I don't know, you know, the, the nail. 
Yeah, they be wearing they wear a nail of a crocodile on their on their on their neck. You understand? They be wearing that. You ask yourself, what is this? No, this thing is protecting me. That's what they tell you. When you take off their, they, they, when they take off their clothes, they be wearing something on their waist. You know what do they call it? A safety belt. Yeah, that's what they call it. Yeah. And inside that safety belt, there's this pouch. Yeah, and hanging. There's umuti in there. They say when you bath, don't take this off. You must always be wearing it. You know, yes, that's what they be doing, man. They say every time when when you bath, you know you. May, and not only that, some of them they tell them not to bath. After they go see some gomas, they say don't bath. In the morning, you say unga case because you know we want the thing to be strong. You be a smellist all over in the workplace at school, but when you are you wearing a safety belt, but you are a smellist. Hmm? That's why a lot of these Sangomas, they smell. I'm going to tell you straight up, because we, we, we meet them. We see them at the shops now. You understand? Some of them, you know, they be wearing these things in public. You go into the shops, they are there. They be saying, oh. you ever heard that? <laughs> Man, I've heard that before. Man, in the, on the aisle, I'm buying something. Oh. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Can't you know, because it's cool mean to them, you know? Mm -hmm. And they say, yeah, no, 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 something, no, men, men, somewhere. You know, somebody's spirit, yeah, but young cinder. <laughs> cinder that's, you, that's that demon that you are carrying. That's the one that's cinder in you, you see. You understand? <laughs> man, how low have we fallen, man? We've fallen so low, we wash it. Because remember, man, in Egypt, give me the Vilkas 18 and 1. In Egypt, it was so bad that we started worshiping frogs. Do you understand that? It was so bad in Egypt, right? That's why when God destroyed the Egyptians, he destroyed their gods, their idols. Because the Egyptians, they worship crocodiles, they worship um, fish, they worship the sky, they the sky god, they worship the cow. You understand? They were all manner of, of animals that they used to worship. You understand that? So now, that's how low we fell in Egypt. We fallen so low that we started worshiping flies. You understand that? Locusts. That's why the Lord brought the locusts to come and destroy the, the crops in Egypt because that's what the Egyptians were worshipping. He says, these gods that you're worshipping, I'm going to destroy them to show you these are not gods. You understand? So what do you think is different today? Is it any different? Because our people walk around with horns on their, on their necks and safety belts around their waists. Hmm? What's different? They be wearing spanglers on their wrists. So what is that? That's an idol, man. So what has changed from the time when we were in Egypt under Pharaoh to today when we are under the white man, the new Pharaoh? There's no difference, man, and we have never left the Egyptian customs. We're still traveling with them until today. Now read that. Leviticus 18 and 1, start there. The book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Come on. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Read. After the doings of the land of Egypt. So the things that we did when we were in Egypt, what did God say? Where he dwelt. Because we dwelt there for 400 years, we dwelt in Egypt. Read. Shall he not do? He says, don't do those things when you come into the promised land. Don't bring the, the garbage of Egypt into the new land, the promised land that I promised unto your forefathers. Read. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, uh -huh. whither I bring you. He says, in the land of Canaan where I'm going to bring you, what must you not do? Shall you not do? He says, don't do those things that you did in Egypt in the land that I'm going to take you in. Go ahead. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. He says, don't walk in their ordinances. Don't follow their customs and traditions. Right? He shall do my judgment uh -huh. and keep my ordinances. He says, don't keep the ordinances of the Egyptians. No. But we must keep the ordinances of the Lord, which is the lively oracles. Read to walk therein. To do what? To walk therein. Go ahead. I am the Lord your God. That's a commandment. You know how many times we read this when we're at camp? Our people still don't take heed to this, man. They still don't take heed to this. Because why? We always trust in the Egyptians. That's why today you see black men on YouTube talk about whether they are Egyptologists. Do you know who came up with Egyptology? A white man. This language of hieroglyphics. The white man is the one. Egyptology is a white man's doctrine. Black men be following it. They say, no, you see, I'm deep. Look at my beats. I'm deep, brother. You see, look at my beats. You understand? They are lost, man. They are lost. Okay, now watch this. Um, go back to Isaiah. No, Isaiah 2 and 6. Read Isaiah 2 and 6. 
Chapter 2 verse 6. Watch this. Therefore, thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, uh -huh. because because they be replenished from the east. They be replenished from the east. Because when we were in Egypt, man, guess what? Not East Africa. Because remember, Egypt, uh, Jerusalem is not East Africa. When we were in the land, you know what we were doing? We were, I'm going to show you what we were doing when we were in the land. All men of witchcraft we did when we were in the land. Because remember, we kept the commandments and then we stopped keeping the commandments. We started, we went into idolatry. That's why the Lord had to send Elijah. When they had, when Ahab and them, they set up the, the prophets of, they set up the altar of Baal. When all the prophets of Baal came to worship, to bow down to that thing. You understand? Now watch this. What verse is that? Hey, what did I say, go? Yeah, there's one in Isaiah, but there's one that I want. Go back to Leviticus 20. I'm going to show you what we're doing. Leviticus 20 on one. You see, this thing of abortions, Worshipping graven images, killing our children to sacrifice their blood unto these. Because those are the gods of Canaan. The Canaanites, that's what they do. So when you see our people committing so much, so many abortions, they are worshipping the gods of the Canaanites. Because the Canaanites will kill their children and sacrifice their, and offer their children unto the Molech, the god Molech. You understand? That's what they do. That's what abortion, abortion is idolatry. You offering your children unto Molech. Okay. Now read that. Leviticus 20 and 1. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 verse 1. Watch this. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying. Now read that. Leviticus 20 and 1. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying. Again thou shalt say to the children of Israel. Ray. Whosoever he be of the children of Israel. Or of the strangers that sojourn in, the, in Israel. That given any of his seed unto Molech. You see that given any of their seed to Molech. Their seed is their children. Read. He shall surely be put to death. He shall what now? He shall surely be put to death. Why do you think? Here's another thing by the way. You see these women that commit so many abortions. Them cover never goes. You ever notice that? They, it's, it, it, they always look like they are pregnant. Because they are trying to hide the pregnancy with the abortion. So the more abortions they commit. The more I said don't worry. I'm going to make your stomach to be big. Even when you're not pregnant. You understand that? Read. Come on. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. Go ahead. And I will set my face against that man. And will cut him off from among his people. The Lord says I'm going to kill him. Come on. Because he has given of his seed unto Molech. He has given his seed, his children unto Molech. Read. To defile my sanctuary. Right. And to profane my holy name. Go ahead. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man. So now remember, you notice or like uh, the people that commit abortions, some people don't talk about it. They say, no, don't mention this thing. Don't say anything about it, right? So the Lord says, if anybody hides this thing, right? When he giveth of his seed unto Molech. When they give their seed, meaning they commit abortion, the Lord is saying, right? And kill him not. So remember, I get it, this thing, we don't report it in our community, in our families. The Lord says, this thing, because you don't say anything about it, is going to keep happening in the community. Leviticus 5 and 1, we're coming back. The book of Leviticus, chapter 5, verse 1. Watch this. And if a soul sin, mm -hmm. and hear the voice of strength. He says, if a soul sin, go ahead. And he's a witness. And you are a witness to this sin. Come on. Whether he has seen or known of it. Wait, whether you've seen it or you know about it. Go ahead. If he do not utter it. But you don't report it. What's going to happen? Then you shall bear his iniquity. That's why our, our people have this demonic code. They say snitches get stitches. Don't be a snitch. Why do you think so many of our people are dropping dead? Because why? They say don't be a snitch. Don't say nothing. Me, be those three monkeys. He says do no evil, see no evil, hear no evil. The three evil monkeys. Do no evil, see no evil, hear no evil. I mean, I didn't see nothing. I didn't hear nothing. I didn't do nothing. You understand? So that's more like, you see, that's the child right there. Being sacrificed. This is the child that was given to by the mother or the father. So, and this thing was an idol that was just sitting there. It was a, a, a graven image. So our forefathers will go there and bring that thing and offer it, and they will slay the child there on that statue, and the child will die right there. They didn't do it while the child was still in the stomach. 
Back then it was so bad that they took the child out. The child was born, walking around, and then they took the child over there and they slayed the child. And they slayed, they set the child on fire and they be dancing around the fire naked. Where do you think this thing come from? You understand? So now, um, what verse you at? Leviticus 20 verse what? Yeah, read verse 4. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 verse 4. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man, right. when he giveth of his seed unto Molly, and kill him not, watch this, then I will set my face against that man, Go ahead. and against his family. You see, now stop right there. You see what the Lord is saying he's going to do? He says he's going to set his face against you and your house. Right? That's why you find Ori, the children in there, they don't get married. They commit abortions. Young, children, young girls, they are jewelry. You know why? Because the parents, they were hiding these type of things. So now the Lord says, I'm going to get you. Right? And will cut him off. And all that go a warning after him mm. to commit whoredom with Molech. You see that to commit whoredom with Molech. Read from among their people. From among their people. So this right here is a continuation of the witchcraft we just read. Because abortion is the same, it's witchcraft also. So is the going to wizards and sins and gomas is the same thing. They all fall under the same category. What is that? Breaking the first commandment. That's what this means. <laughs> now, um, okay, that's it on that. Now, what I want to go into is this. The, the, the fairy tales and delusions of Christianity. I just wanted to touch on the idolatry stuff. You understand? Then I'm going to be saying that thing. The most I sent me over there, man, to bring this thing out. Understand that. Let's get it. No, no, don't say I'm making this up. Give me Ezekiel. That I may be justified in what I'm saying. Because I know there's a Negro right now online. He's like, mm. yeah, you see? We're all laying on a little girl's <laughs> name. There's no such thing. Give me Ezekiel 14 and 1. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, verse 1. Come on. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me. Watch this. And sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts. Stop right there. It says, These men that come to inquire, they set up idols in their hearts. Go ahead. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Right? Should I be inquired of, of at all by them? Watch this. Therefore, speak unto them and say unto them. Now, when you come, you when you come to inquire, you come to the congregation, right? You come to the Sabbath class, you attend and whatnot. Here's what the Lord says. He says, everybody that walks in, you've got idols. That's what we just read earlier. He says, from, from within, out of the heart of men. Proceed evil thoughts. Those are idols. Read. Therefore, speak unto them and say unto them, That says the Lord God. Watch this. Every man of the house of Israel that set up his idols in his heart. Read. And put the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face. Watch this. And come to the prophet. And do what now? And come to the prophet. You coming for counsel or you coming for class? In the classroom, like right now. Read. I the Lord. I war oh, not me. Not no me. I the Lord. No me. I the Lord. It's me doing this. I the Lord. I the Lord will do what? Will answer him. The Lord says he's gonna answer you. Come on. That cometh according to the multitude of his idols. So whatever scripture that come out, you must know. Somebody dealing with it right now. So the Lord says, I'm gonna answer you according to that idol that you have in your spirit. That idol is what? Sangomas and Amagos. The Lord says, I'm gonna answer you according to that. You understand that? Yes, Abortion and everything, worshipping Molech and whatnot, he says, I'm going to answer you according to that idol that's in your heart. You understand? So it's not me. It's the Lord. He says, I the Lord, not me. You understand? Go ahead. That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart. In their what? In their own heart. The same heart that the Lord says, do not trust in your own heart. Read. Because they are all estranged from, from me. Through their idol. So the Lord says, now you are a stranger to him because of the idol you worship. Because the minute you go into idolatry, you are a stranger to the Mosai. Because you're supposed to worship him and no other God before him. But now you worship him. You worship the idol. So that means the Lord is a stranger to you. 
and you are estranged from him also. You understand? So now, now, now let's deal with those fairy tales and delusions of Christianity. Give me John 3.16. Let's start there. I'm going to be killing these ones, these, these things one by one. I'm going to be slaying these doctrines, man. John 3.16. Don't think John 3.16 is old, man. Mm -mm. The people when you, because the behavior of the people, man, is fundamentally linked to John 3.16. Everything they do is linked to John 3.16. I'm going to show you that. John 3.16. Read that. John chapter 3, 16. Come on. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Come on. That whosoever believeth in him. But that whosoever believeth in him shall not shall not perish. Should not perish. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know this scripture, everybody knows this scripture. Because they recite it every everybody that goes to the Christian church, they know this scripture. They dream about it. It's age, it's like it's like a it's like a it's like, it's, it's like um it's, it's forged into their brain with a hot iron. You understand? So anything and everything that they do is based on John 3.16. Read that verse again, verse 16. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, uh -huh. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now remember, this is the Messiah speaking. This is Christ the Messiah speaking here. Now, let's understand because remember now, give me that in Revelation 1. Revelation 1 verse 3. Because in the Christian church, we all know, our people don't read the Bible in the Christian church. They read a few verses. Now read that. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 3. Come on. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that what? Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that reads. So you must read the Bible. But you don't just read. Read for comprehension, man. Read that again. Book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 3. Come on. Blessed is he that readeth. Come on. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. For the time is at hand. So now, now what we're reading here, the Lord is saying, blessed be he that readeth. So you must read the Bible, man. You must study this book. But don't just read it and not understand. You must read and understand what's being said. For you to understand what's being said, Psalms 111 and 10 real quick. For you to understand what the Bible is saying, you must do what it says. In order for you to understand what it's saying, you must do what it says. Now read that. Psalms 111 and 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Come on. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Come on. A good understanding. A what? A good understanding. A good understanding. Come on. Have all day that do his commandments. Have all day that do his commandments. So you do the commandments of the Lord, you will have a good understanding. You don't do the commandments of the Lord, you will have a terrible understanding. That's why the people in the Christian church, they think they understand. But their understanding is wrong. Why? Because they say the laws of God are done away with. So what makes you think you can understand anything that's written in here? Because the laws are done away with. I think that's what they say. They say the laws of God are no longer, so therefore, we under grace. So now, because you're under grace, you don't got to do nothing. That's why they have no understanding. Because remember, the Bible is a practical book. You must apply it. It's not a true love magazine when you just read and then it's not, it's not fire and forget. No. It's read, understand, and apply. It's read, apply, and understand, and repeat. You understand? So now, go back. John 3, 16. Read that again. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Come on. he gave his only begotten son. Read. That whosoever believeth in him. That what? That whosoever believeth in him. Read. Should not perish, mm. but have everlasting life. So now, remember, reading is fundamental. Let's start at verse 1. Let's see who's dialoguing it. Who's the people talking? The book of John, chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. There was a man of the Pharisees. There was a what? There was a man of the Pharisees. There was a man of the Pharisees. Come on. Named Nicodemus, mm -hmm. a ruler of the Jews. A what? A ruler of the Jews. So Nicodemus was a Pharisee, but, and he was a Jew. He was a leader of the Jews. Now watch this. Jeremiah 14 and 2. Let's see what Nicodemus looked like. 
Because you see, when you go here with a Christian, they say, see, it's not about color, but it is written, so we're going to read it because every scripture is profitable for doctrine. Shut the hell up and be quiet. Now read the Bible. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Watch this. Judah morning. It says the Jews are mourning. Go ahead. And the gates, they are of love. When you are mourning, it means you are lamenting. Lamentation. You understand? Read that again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Come on. Judah mourn. Judah mourn. And the gates they of language. And the gates they of their language. Come on. They are black. They are what? They are black. Come on. Unto the ground. So now the Bible says the Jews are black. So what color was Nicodemus? Because color is important. Because the reason why you hear color doesn't matter is because of John 3.16. The reason why the people in the Christian church say color doesn't matter is because of John 3.16. You understand? Because they say, God so loved the world. So it doesn't matter what he looked like. He loved the whole world. Read that verse again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2. Come on. Judah mourning. The Jews are mourning. They are lamenting. Come on. And the gates they of language. Read. They are black. They are what? The they are black unto the ground. They are black unto the ground. Now watch this. Lamentations 1 and 1. The book of Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. How does the cities, how does the city sit solitary? Okay, how does the city sit solitary? How? Solitary meaning what? They are in isolation. That's us. Go ahead. How does the city sit solitary? Read. Right? That was full of people. That was what? That was full of people. That was full of people. This city is the city of Jerusalem. Go ahead. How is she become as a widow? Uh -huh. She that was great among the nations. And princes among the provinces. Read. How is she become tributary? How did we become tributary to these nations? How did we help build these? How did we help these nations build empires on our backs? You understand? Because now we've become tributary to these nations. The nations are passing us around on slave ships. They are sending us around across the seas. You understand? To make money off of us, free slave labor. You understand? Read. She weepeth so in the night. Because why? She's lamenting. That's why it says, Judah mourneth. The Jews are mourning. Read. And her, and her tears are on their cheeks. And her tears are on her cheeks. Meaning what? She's crying. We're mourning. We're lamenting. Go ahead. Among all her lovers, she has none to comfort her. Because our lovers, we thought, we think these nations, they love us. These nations don't love us. They are not our lovers, but we think they are. Because they give us jobs. They give us employment and all that. By right, these nations will not do it if the Lord didn't move their spirits to give us jobs. The nations will not give us jobs if the most high God of heaven and earth did not move their spirits to do it. It's not up to them. It's up to the Lord. That's why they give us jobs. But if it was up to them, they wouldn't do it. But they would make us work and they will not, make, they will not pay for us. They will not pay us any wages. You understand? Read. All their friends have dealt treacherously. Treacherously with her. Right? They have become as an enemy. You see that the nations have become our enemies because they are our enemies. Go ahead. Judah is gone into captivity. You see that Judah is gone into captivity. The Jews are mourning. Judah mourneth. Come on. Because of affliction. Because of affliction. Go ahead. And because of great servitude. Because of great servitude. Great bondage. Hard slave labor. Go ahead. She dwelleth among the heathen. You see where Judah is? You see what the Jews are? We're dwelling among the heathens. We're among these other demonic nations that hate our guts. Read. She findeth no rest. We're finding no rest. That's why they make you work even on the Sabbath. They want you to come to work. Even on Sunday, they want you to come to work. You understand? Read. All the persecutors overtook her between the streets. Between the streets. Meaning between what? The streets. You see, our persecutors is these other nations that delivered us to all these countries all over the world you understand north central and south america china india so on and so forth australia you understand gabon you understand japan india what that's where we are south africa we are scattered everywhere go ahead the ways of zion do mourn mm, you see that judah mourneth right because none come to the solemn feast because none come to the solemn feast you know why because Judah is occupied with the customs of the heathens. They are going to celebrate Easter now that's coming. That demonic holy, holy day. Easter is coming. They are already advertising bunnies on, on, on the shops now. You walk into the shop, you see a bunny. You see eggs. Those Easter eggs, as if a bunny lays eggs. A bunny don't lay no eggs. 
God, that's why our people are bewitched. You understand? Read. Or the gates are desolate. You see, that's why Judah mourned and the gates there of language. Read. Her priests sigh. Her virgins are afflicted. You see that? Come on. And she is in bitterness. Are we not in bitterness, brothers and sisters? We are in bitterness. The only thing that keeps me going and our mobbing is to adventure everybody else is the Sabbath day. Where we come together, we forget about the white man and the Indian man and the Chinese man and the Arab man to hell with them. We come together and worship the Lord God of heaven and earth. And during the week, we, keep the, we still keep the commandments. We gather ourselves together. We pray, we fast and all that to keep ourselves in the spirit. So me, I look forward to the Sabbath, man, because I know I'm seeing all my brothers and sisters coming together. That's what the Lord wants. That's why it says, gather yourself together. Read. Her adversaries are the chief. You see, our adversaries now, they are the chief. You know what that means? Our enemies now, they are ruling over us. The people that are supposed to be slaves, now they are slaves, they are masters now. Hold that, give me Ecclesiastes 10. I'm going to show you that, man. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 6. Listen good. Turn me up a little bit. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 6. Read. Folly is set in great dignity. Who's the folly? The white man. He's the folly. He's the foolish one. He says, folly is set in great dignity. Isn't the white man now sitting in great dignity? Yes. And who put him up there? Hold that. Give me Re Revelation 12. Revelation 13. He says, folly is set in great dignity. You understand? Revelation 13 and 1. Real quick. I'm going to show you why, how, is, how did the white man end up in great dignity? How did he end up there? Read it. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 1. Watch this. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. Read. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea. This beast is a metaphor for the white man. The white man's empire. Go ahead. Having seven heads and ten horns. So these seven heads is making reference to the white man's empire. Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, and Great Britain. And, and now America coming out of Great Britain in 1776. Write that down. Go ahead. And upon his horns, ten crowns. And upon his horns, upon his what? And upon his horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns. His horns is talking about his empires, his kingdoms. Ten horns. The ten crowns is the what? Is the EU. The European Union. Also known as NATO. That's them. Go ahead. And upon his head, the name of blasphemy. This name of blasphemy is Christianity. Politics. You understand? Read. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Because remember, the Greeks, when you read the history of the Greeks, Alexander was like into a leopard. So this beast is like a leopard. Because why? The Greeks are part of this beast. Read. And his feet were as, as the feet of a bear. As the feet of a bear. Remember, what is the color of this beast? Revelation 12 and 3. So we understand. The, the color of this beast. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 3. Come on. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Go ahead. And behold, a great red dragon. Stop. What color is the beast? A great red dragon. Because in Revelation 13, John calls it the beast. In Revelation 12, he calls it a dragon. It's the same thing. He's making reference to the white man. Read. Having, having seven heads and ten horns. Seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. And, and seven crowns upon his head. Because that's the empire of this beast, of this dragon. You understand? So now, go back to Revelation 13, verse 2 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 2. Watch this. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. The Greeks. The Greeks are part of this dragon. They are red. The red men, the red nation, that's what? Red devils. That's the Caucasian race in its entirety. You understand? Genesis 25, 25. That's why you ever see what's, what's this club, this football club, Barki Arsenal. Ne? They call them Red Devils. That's them. Ne? Is it? No, no, not Arsenal. Manchester. Manchester, Manchester United, right? The Red Devils. Mm -hmm. It's not a coincidence. They call themselves Red Devils. They know they are red. They know they are not like this paper. They are white. They are not white. They are red. Now read what you got. Revelation 25, 25, just to get who is this red dragon. Read. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 25. Read. And the first came out red. The first boy came out red. All over, like an hairy come. He was red and he was hairy. Come on. And they called his name Esau. They called his name Esau. 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 
That's the biblical name of the white man. That's the red dragon. So go back, Revelation 13 now. Verse 2 again. Yeah, go to Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. Read. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. The Greeks are part of this dragon. When you read, read Daniel. Read. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. So it says, this beast had the feet of a bear. Because in the ancient kingdoms, there were four empires that rose. That Babylon, no, 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 Persia, had the symbol of a bear. The Persian Empire. Their symbol was the symbol of a bear. The Media and Persia Empire. So now, but guess what? In this captivity, who is has the who who is who is, has the symbol? Who is the symbol of a bear and is red? Russia. Russian bear. Why do you even they even have a bear called Russian bear? Russia. So Russia is part of this beast. They are red. Because the Persian Empire, they are they are dark in complexion. So obviously, it's not making reference to the Persian Empire. It's making reference to Russia. Go ahead. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Because in the ancient kingdoms, in the book of Daniel, the lion, who took the symbol of a lion? Babylon. But Babylonians is the Ethiopians, Muslim. So obviously, it's not making reference to the Babylonians. But who took the symbol of the lion in these last days? That's what Great Britain. They have the symbol of the lion. You understand? Great Britain. British. Read. And the dragon gave him his power. Stop right there. And the what? And the dragon. And the what? And the dragon. And the dragon, come on. Gave him his power. The, so the devil gave the white man the power that he has. That's why it says, and the what now? And the dragon. And the dragon. Gave him his power. Gave him his power. His, and his seed. His, and his seed. And great authority. And great authority. That's why it says, folly is set in great dignity. So who set this white man in great dignity? The dragon did it. What's the dragon? The devil. The spiritual demon Satan. Gave this white man the power that he has today. It's not because he's clever. No, no, he's a devil worshiper. That's why he's got the power that he has today. You understand? Give me Luke 4 and 6. I'm going to prove that. That the white man, the power that he has, he gets from the devil. Luke 4 verse 6. He says the dragon gave him his power. Okay, go ahead. The book of Luke chapter 4 verse 6. Watch this. And the devil said unto him. And the what? And the devil This said is when Christ him. was testing... This is when the devil was tempting Christ when he was fasting, right? Watch this, come on. The book of Luke chapter 4, verse 6. Come on. And the devil said unto him, Read. All this power will I give thee. All this power I'm going to give you. Come on. And the glory of them. And the riches of them. So meaning what? Money and power. Money, power, and respect. Where do you think the, the white man gets this money, this power, and this respect he gets it from? Where did he get it from? He was given to, he was given to him by Satan himself. Read. But that is delivered unto me. Uh -huh. And to whomsoever I will give it. For whosoever I will what? For whomsoever I will give it. Let's see if Christ took the deal. Go ahead. And if thou therefore wilt worship me. If thou therefore wilt what now? If thou therefore wilt worship me. Watch this. All shall be done. He says, if you worship me, I'm going to give you power, money, and respect. Read. And Jesus answered and said unto him. Mm -hmm. Get thee behind me, Satan. So G Christ didn't take the deal. But guess who did? The white man did it. The white man took the deal, though. The white man took the deal, though. Now show me the clip of the Transformers. Show me the clip of the Transformers. I'm going to show you something. In the Transformers, this is what we're reading here in Revelation 13 and Luke 4. You're going to see it here. Watch this. I'm going to show you that. The transformer clip when Merlin was getting the power. <clears throat> because during the Dark Ages, the reason why the Dark Ages ended was because the white men went to war with us. And they won. Not because they were powerful, but because it was our it's their time to rule and our time to go into slavery. Okay, let's do this. I want to show you then that the white man is not clever. He's using the Bible to put out these movies. So when you are in the Bible, you're going to see the subliminal messages that the white man puts out in the movies. Come on. Play. Magic does exist. It was found long ago in 
inside the crashed alien ship. Hello? Listen good here. happened in the 1600s because remember this thing happened in the dark ages towards the end of the dark ages when we were ruling Europe Scotland France and Ireland and Britain we ruled all Europe so now that war that you see there is when it was our time to be defeated by the white man to go into slavery so now it says 1600 years later what do you think was happening to us because we've been transported all over the world on slave ships. Because when the movie starts, it says Dark Ages England. When this movie starts, it says England, Dark Ages. Who was ruling during the Dark Ages? Because it was us. So now it says after the war, you see what year they, they put the exact year, the 1600s, that's when we've been transported all over the world as slaves. You understand that? So, Okay, you can take it off. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when you put on the new one. Now, what you just saw, you saw the white man taking the deal from Satan. You see the color of the dragon also? Man, it says, listen, protect the staff. Because one day great evil will come for it. You know what that means? When the Lord returns, this is over. This is the staff. You know how they're protecting the staff? They are hiding their understanding from us. 
So that's why they've opened the Christian churches to teach our people God so loved the world, he loves everybody. The color doesn't matter. That's how they're protecting the staff. This is the staff. So they are hiding the true understanding of this Bible from us, and they are using the Bible to do it. That's why many of our people hate the Bible. Because the manner in which our enemies have used it to destroy our people. So that's what, because they don't understand. Because that's what the white man has done. That's what it says, the dragon is yours to command. So who's, who's ruling over the white man? Satan. Satan is ruling the white man. That's why it says, that's why you remember what he said? He says, I know, I'm a charlatan, I'm a liar, I'm a... You have deceived my whole life. Get that, Revelation 12, verse 9. He says, I'm a liar, I'm a charlatan, I deceived my whole life. Let's read it in the Bible. Revelation 12, read verse 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. Watch this. And the great dragon was cast out. So, remember what Merlin said? He says, I know your world was destroyed. This is what, it, the, the, I guess this is how they misuse the scriptures. They say, you no, know, Satan was kicked out of heaven. That never happened. But this is how they are applying it in that movie. When it says the dragon was cast out, the dragon is the white man. He's still in his rulership right now. He has not been taken out of his rulership yet. Right? And the great dragon was cast out. Uh -huh. That old serpent. That liar, go ahead. Calls the devil. Called the devil, the deceiver. And said, the opposer, come on. Which deceived the whole world. That's what he said. Remember what he said? He says, I've deceived my whole life. That's what we're reading here. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth. Uh -huh. And his angels were cast out with him. You see that? So now, the white man, guess what he did? He got this authority from Satan. This great seed that he has, he got it from the devil. So he took the deal. There's all this power I'm going to give you. And all this great authority and this great seed, people will respect you. He gets it from Satan, he's dead. His father, the devil. He's not clever. He just has a father who's demonic, who blesses him with demonic signs, magic. That's why you remember the beginning says, magic does exist. Mm -hmm. It was found in a crash alien ship. That's just some evil stuff, man. There was no evil ship or nano, but you see the Caucasus Mountains? Yes, you see those mountains there? That's where Esau was when the devil came to pay him a visit. The Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. You understand that? So, um, I just wanted to show you that so you can understand what we're reading here. You understand? So go back, Revelation 13. Read verse 2 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 2. Watch this. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Come on. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Ray. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Uh -huh. And the dragon gave him his power. That's what you just saw. And the dragon gave him his power. They said the dragon is yours to command. That's what happened during those days. Read. And his seat. And his what? And his seat. Because the white man is the top government on earth right now. Read. And great authority. The white man has great authority over all nations on earth. Where did he get that? The Satan, his father. Read. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. So this is when, this is during the dark ages. This is Rome, when Rome was brought to the, its knees by our forefather, Septimius Severus. This is 193 AD. Write this down. And he saw, I saw as what? And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. He says, one of his heads was wounded to death. Remember, it says the dragon had seven heads. So one of the heads of the dragon was wounded to death. Rome fell in 193 AD. Go ahead. And his deadly wound was healed. So when, when he, the deadly wound of the, of the beast was healed, that's when the white man came back during the Renaissance in 1453. When it says the Renaissance, that's when the white man coming back into power in the earth. How did he get that power? The dragon gave him his power. Right? And all the world wondered after the beast. And all the world wondered after the beast. You know why they are wondering? Yo, how did this white man must be God? This white man is creating science. This white man is inventing all these di scientific discoveries and, and advancements. Where does he get them from? The man that was eating roaches in the bushes, in the mountains, eating lice, not bathing. 
How did this man manage to figure out how to create a touchscreen and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi? How did he come up with that? Satan. Satan gave him that knowledge to do all these things. Read. And they worship the dragon. They, they were, and the world is worshipping this white man. Read. Which gave power unto the beast. You see that? They worship the, the dragon which gave power unto the beast. So the white man worshipped Satan because Satan gave him power to do what he's doing now. Right? And they worship the beast. Mm -hmm. Say, who is like unto the beast? Who is like unto this white man? Who is like this white man? Right? Who is able to make war with him? Who can go to war with this white man? You know why they were asking that? Because they just dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, World War II. The nuclear bomb. You understand? So when the nuclear bomb hit, they're like, who can make war with this man? Because he's making fire to come down from heaven. Who's so powerful to do this? Hmm? Remember Einstein and the atomic bomb and all that? We watched that movie, right? The Oppenheimer? Yes. Right? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things. The mouth that he is using is the media. This white man has the power of the media behind him. Right? And blasphemies. And what? And blasphemies. These blasphemies right here, guess what this is going into? This is going into Christianity. You understand? All the fake tales and delusions that they be pushing is because of the mouth of this white man. Go ahead. And power was given unto him. And power was given to this white man. Who gave him the power? The dragon gave him the power that he has. Right? To continue 40 and 2 months. You see, uh, an extra 350 years to rule. Right? And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. Christianity. To blaspheme his name. The Bible. And his tabernacle. Mm -hmm. The 12 tribes of Israel. And them that dwell in heaven. The angels. Because now they say the angels are white. They say God is white. That's how they are blaspheming them that are on earth and them that are up in the heavens. You understand? Go ahead. And it was given him, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints. And to do what? To make war with the saints. Come on. And to overcome them. Stop. That's why he says, listen, listen, big personalities we are losing save our world. Remember what Merlin was saying? He says, we know our world was destroyed. Don't let ours die too. That's what we're reading here. That's when Satan was giving him power to rule, to take us over during the dark ages when we were ruling. Right? And power was given him over all kingdoms mm -hmm. and tongues and nations. You see that? So that's why the white man rules all nations on earth, including us speaking different languages scattered in these lands. Now go back to Ecclesiastes 10, verse 6. So we can understand what we read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 6. Go ahead. Folly is set in great dignity. It says, folly is set in great dignity. Who's the folly? The great dragon, the white man. How, is he, how did he get to sit in great dignity? It's because the dragon gave him his power. Right? And the rich sit in low place. Who's the rich? That's us. He says, but the rich sit in low place. Where we are? At the bottom. In slavery. In the ghettos. Struggling. Living in mesh box houses. Look at, the, look at the size of the congregation. Look, look. We're not poor, man. We're poor. But guess what? We're pushing. The knowledge that's coming out of this country, you cannot believe it. <laughs> you know the people that watch us online and they come to visit us and like, what? This knowledge is coming? Yes, the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. And he's to be feared above all gods. For the God of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. All praise to the Most High God for that thing. Keep reading, man. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 6. Come on. Folly is set in great dignity. It says, folly is set in great dignity. Come on. And the rich sit in low place. And the rich, they sit in low place. Who's sitting in low place? That's us. We're the rich, by the way. But we're sitting in low place right now. The white man, he's sitting is the rich, basically, we are in the white man's hell, he's in our kingdom. You see that? Right? I have seen servants upon horses. He says, I've seen servants upon horses. Because when you sit in a horse, to sit on a horse, it means you're on authority. Remember the movie Django? You understand? Where they saw the, the hey, who that nigga see? Who, who that nigga on that name? Because the, the Samuel L. Jackson, the, the character of uh, what was his name? <laughs> what was his name? Samuel L. Jackson's character in Django. Come on, brothers. 
I forgot his name. But he saw a black man on a horse. It's like, what? A black man on a horse? And he's traveling with a white man? Hmm. Hi, there's some evil stuff right here. But because it was what? It was frowned upon a, man, a black man on a horse. That means he's in authority. So now King Solomon is saying, I've seen servants upon horses. So during slavery, in the farms, who was sitting on horses? The white man. And how many black men was he commanding? Thousands. Thousands of black men. One white man on a horse controlling a thousand black men. Now show him. Yeah, that's it on there. Yeah, that's it right there. That's the proper house Negro, this one. Like our past, the pastors in the Christian church, this is them. They love master more than master loves himself. When the master is, is sick, he says, master, we sick. We. He says, we. We sick. Now play. Hello. Speak with my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, oh, my head. Mm. Who this nigga up on that name? You see? <laughs> So I just wanted to show you that it was like, what? A black man on a horse? Hell no. So that's why even the black man is surprised by that. You understand? So read that again. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 6 verse 7 again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 7. Read. I have seen servants upon horses. You see that? I've seen servants upon horses. So Django wasn't a servant in actual fact. Django is the rich that sits in no place. And you see the fall is sitting in dignity. Who set them up? Satan. Read. And sit servants upon horses. Come on. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. And princes walking as servants upon the earth. Who are those princes? That's us. We walking as servants upon the earth. We are in slavery. You understand? We are saving our prison sentence and it's coming to an end. That's why you... The reason why I'm saying it's coming to an end, look at us. This is an example. This is evidence... That our prison sentence is coming to an end and it's time to go home. Understand that, man? And man, we're going to fight these devils. I cannot wait. You understand? Patiently waiting for that. Understand that. Now, um, go back. Where were we at? Yeah, Lamentations 1 verse 5. Read that for me. The book of Lamentations chapter 1 verse 5. Watch this. Her adversaries are the chief. You see, her adversaries are the chief. Meaning our enemies, they are the chief. They, you see what that was as folly seat is set in great dignity. Read. Her enemies prosper, but the Lord has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. You see that? It says our enemies are prospering. So that's why when you see our enemies are prospering, is because when you see our enemies prosper, it means we as a nation, we've transgressed the laws of God. The only reason why you see these nations are prospering, they are, they, they are richer, they are rich and all of that, they're living large, life is good. Is because Israel has sinned. And the nations know it. I need you to understand that. The reason why the nations are so comfortable. And the nations they are so comfortable with us. In our simplicity. In our foolishness. Saking our pants. Blonding our hair. And all of that. Boom boom rap party soccer players. And, and celebrities and what not. It gives the white men and the other nations comfort. That they are still asleep. The minute we stop doing all that foolishness. Guess what? The nations become scared. So if the nations were to walk in and see us like this, they will be shaking in their boots. When they see us online, when we're teaching on the streets, they are scared of us. I need you to understand that. 
Read. Her adversaries are the chief. Mm. Her enemies prosper. Go ahead. The Lord has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Go ahead. Her children have gone into captivity. Her children have gone into captivity. Go ahead. Before the enemy. Because you see where we are? We are in slavery and we are surrounded by our enemies. That's why always in the prayer, we always pray for vengeance. Yes, sir. So if you praying for the deliverance of your enemy, guess what? Your execution must be publicized. Mm. Yes, when the Lord brings the judgment, your execution must be, must be publicized. We must see it. We must see that you be persecuted publicly and we're going to praise the Lord. So when you pray every day, every night, you better pray for the destruction of your enemies because if you don't, you don't have faith in the Lord. Because the Christianity tells you, you know, pray for your enemies. Christianity is a sick demon. Christianity, they are sick. Give me Luke 18. Because somebody might say, mm, mm, why must, yeah, that's not, that's not Jesus of you. Mm, you don't have Jesus in your heart. Why do you want your enemies to be to die? No, that's not me. That's the Lord. Let's read it. Luke 18 and 1. The book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1. They're going to say, you see, he don't have Jesus in his heart. No, I have Jesus in my heart. That's why I said, die to the enemy, die. Now read the Bible. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. Watch this. That men ought always to pray. So you see, you must always pray. Go ahead. And not to faint. And don't faint. Always must be sending up the prayers, man. Read. Say, mm. there was in a city a judge. That's the most high God of heaven and earth. Go ahead. Which feared not God. Read. Neither regarded men. Watch this. And there was a widow in that city. There was a widow in that city. Come on. And she came unto him, saying, mm -hmm. Avenge me of my adversary. Avenge me of my adversary. Okay, no, this Christ. Come on. And he would not for a while. He says he would not for a while. He didn't listen to this widow. Remember in Lamentations, it says we are a widow. Don't forget now, we are a widow, we cry. Our tears are running down our cheeks. Go ahead. And he would not for a while. Ray. But afterward, mm -hmm. he said within himself. Watch this. Though I fear not God. Watch this. Nor regard men. Come on. Yet, because this widow troubles me. Because this widow troubles me. If you don't trouble the Lord to destroy your enemies, shame on you. Read. I will avenge her. He said, yes. the Lord says, he says what? Yet because this widow troubles me. Because we're troubling the Lord with the prayers. Go ahead. I will avenge. I you. will avenge my, the widow. Go ahead. Lest by her continual coming she weary. Go ahead. Watch this. And the Lord said. Mm -hmm. Hear what the unjust judge said. Watch this. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Shall not God avenge his own elect? Come on. Which cry day and night unto him. We must cry day and night unto the Lord. Isn't that the same thing that the Lord wanted us to do when we were in Egypt? He says, because I heard the cry of the children of Israel, that's when I came to send Moses to deliver them. So, but if you don't cry, the Lord said, I'm gonna send, I'm not gonna send the prophet to come and deliver you, man. Because you're not crying, because what? You still enjoy being in slavery. You still enjoy being a slave. But look over busy when you want to buy something, they say your credit score. Your credit score. To help men. But on that day, them days will listen, man. They're not gonna be needing any credit score. Right? Though he bear long with them, watch this. I tell you, mm. and he will avenge them speedily. The Lord says, I'm gonna avenge you speedily. Come on. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. when the Son of Man comes, when the when the now, now Christ says, when he returns, go ahead. Shall he find faith on the earth? Is he going to find faith on the earth? Is he going to find men and women having faith in him to destroy his enemies? Because remember, I give you a praying for the destruction of your enemies. Then it's time. The Lord comes down. Then when he comes, when you see him destroying, putting your enemies, giving your enemies the beat, you start to feel sorry for them. The Lord says, you see, you have no faith. So this whole time, you praying for me to destroy your enemies. And now when I come to do it, you feeling sorry for your enemies. The Lord says you have no faith. Because remember, you think when the Lord comes, it's going to be all nice. No, man. He says, that day, he says, don't pray for that day like that, man. Don't look forward. He says, that day is a day of evil. That's why in the movie says, protect the staff. One day a great evil will come for it. So, the great evil, you know who they are referring to? The Lord. They are talking about the Messiah. He is coming to bring great evil upon this earth. So, when he comes to do it, don't say, no, stop. No. Say, keep going. I want to see it. You sit down and you eat some popcorns and watch this thing go down. 
I'm telling you, man, we must rejoice when we see our enemies go down. You understand? Because, right, by the way, that, that's something that we must pray for. I'm going to show it to you. You know, I know I'm supposed to be going over John 3, 16, but my God, man, hold on. Give me Sarah 25, man, real quick. This is too good to pass up. Watch this. Give me that team, Sarah 25, man. Sarah 25, um, read verse 7. I'm going to show you this thing. Sarah 25 and 7. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 25, verse 7. Read. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be heavy. Read. And the tenth I will utter with my tongue. Come on. A man that has joy of his children. A man that has joy of his children. That's a beautiful thing. Go ahead. Watch this. And he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. That's it right there. He says, this thing right here, I'm going to utter it with my tongue. I'm going to speak it out loud. You understand? So when you cry out loud to the Lord, this is what you must pray for. Pray for the demise of your enemies, man. Understand that. Now go back to John 3. Did I finish lamentation, man? Um, no, I'm still going, I believe. Because I'm explaining Judah morning. Okay, read that. Lamentations 1. Is it verse 5 now we in? Yes, sir. Yeah, read it. The book of Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Her adversaries are the chief. Read. Her enemies prosper. For the Lord has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgression. Go ahead. Her children are gone into captivity. Her children are gone into captivity. Before the enemy. Before the enemy. Come on. And from the daughter of Zion, mm. all her beauty is departed. You see that? He says the beauty of Zion is departed. What is the beauty of Zion? The keeping of God's laws. When you keep God's commandment in Israel, the beauty of Zion will be seen by all nations on earth. Read. Her princes have become like huts mm. that find no pasture. Watch this. And they are gone without strength before the pursuer. Who's the pursuer? The enemies. Go ahead. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction and of her miseries in all, in, in all her pleasant things. No, no, read that right. Verse 7 again. The book of Lamentations, chapter 1, verse 7. Read. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction mm. and of her miseries all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old. Meaning all our riches and our glory. What happened to it? Come on. When her people fell into the hand of the enemy. The, when we fell into the hand of the enemy, this is 70 AD. When we fell into the hand of the enemy. <coughs> Go ahead. And none did help us. And no, nobody helped us. Who's helping us today? Nobody except the Lord of heaven and earth. He's the one that's helping us, man. Come on. The adversary saw her mm. and did mock at her Sabbath. They did what now? And did mock at her Sabbath. You know what it means when they, our adversaries, they saw us being destroyed and desolate and they did mock at our Sabbaths. What are the heathens doing today on the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. They play soccer. It's sports. It's going out. It's braying and all that. You know what they are doing? They are mocking at our Sabbaths. And our, our own people have joined the heathen to mock the Sabbath days. And remember, we went over the Sabbath in great detail. The Sabbath, we went for two Sabbaths ago, two Sabbaths or three Sabbaths ago, we went into the Sabbath class in great detail. That when you keep the Sabbath, it means you want to be delivered from captivity. You want the true rest that's coming. That's what it means to observe the Sabbath. That means you have faith. When you observe the Sabbath, it means you have faith in the deliverance and the salvation that's coming. When you don't observe the Sabbath, that means you say to hell with salvation and deliverance, I want to be a slave. That's what you're saying. Understand that? Now watch this. Go back to John 3 now. No, Jeremiah 14 and 2 again. Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Let's go back there. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Come on. Judah mourning. The Jews are mourning. So we went over the book of Lamentations. Read. And the gates they of Lamb. He show, showed you that the gates, they are what? They are, in, they are desolate. Go ahead. They are black unto the ground. So the Jews are black. So now, now go back to John 3 and 1. John 3 and verse 1 now. You see, when you do this with a Christian, they say, you see? You see? You don't have to go to all those verses. Yeah, that's what the Bible says to do. When you do this, the Christians, they hate your guts. They say, why are you reading so many scriptures? But I thought you said you read the Bible. I, saw, I thought you said you believe in it. So, but when you go to all this, but that's why the sister ran away in the morning on the video. 
when she ran, when we were going over the precept upon precept, she ran. <laughs> she came to us with hermeneutics and exegesis, and she thought she was telling us, she thought we don't understand what she's saying. When we showed her that all that you are saying is not biblical, it's just like, show me. We showed her she ran. You understand? Read that, John 3 and 1. John chapter 3 verse 1. Come on. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. So Nicodemus was a Jew and he was a ruler of the Jews. What color was Nicodemus? What was his nationality? He was an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. You understand? And the Jews are black like me. Understand that? Now give me John 3 and 3 now. Remember, Nicodemus is having a discussion here with Christ. They are having a discussion. Come on. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 3. Listen good. Jesus answered and said unto him, mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Go ahead. Except a man be born again. Go ahead. He cannot see the kingdom of God. So now he says, listen, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom. Meaning, except you change and keep the commandments, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven on earth. Read on, verse 4. Nicodemus saith unto him, uh -huh. How can a man be born when he's old? When he's old. He says, how can a man be born when he's old? Come on. Can he enter the second time into, into his mother's womb and be born? So Nicodemus didn't understand was what, what was being said. He was confused. Read. Right? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, mm -hmm. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now he's giving him the answer. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. So right here, that's why in the Christian church today, they still be dipping people in dirty water. Because Christ said, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. And of the spirit, they be clapping you. They say, I got the Holy Ghost. Aha, aha. <laughs> they be saying that. Now watch this. Let's get the water. Ephesians 5, 26. Let's get the precept to understand what the water is. The reason why I'm going over this is because Christians, they read this. They don't, they don't, they read the verses out of context, so they don't understand the context. Now read that. Ephesians 5 verse 26. Come on. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. Read. That he might sanctify mm. and cleanse it. And what? And cleanse it. Come on. With the washing of water by the word. So the water is making reference to the word of God. So what we're doing right now, you being what? Except you being born of water right now. So all the verses we just read, you are being born of water. The water is the word of God. We don't got to splash your face with nothing. You understand? So go back. He says, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. John 6, 63. Let's see what the spirit is. The spirit. The spirit is the Holy Spirit. Okay, come on. The book of John chapter 6, verse 63. Read. It is the spirit that quickens. It is the spirit that quickens. The word quickens there means changes. It the, is the spirit that changes you. Read. The flesh profited nothing. Read. The ways that I speak unto you. Come on. They are spirit. They are what? They are spirit. Come on. And they are life. So what is the spirit? The spirit is the word of God. So go back to John 3. John chapter 3. Read verse, four, verse 5 again. The book of John chapter 3 verse 5. Come on. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Ray. Except a man be born of water, mm -hmm. and of the spirit. The water is the word, come on, and the spirit is the word of God, come on. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So now, what we just read, Nicodemus is having a discussion with Christ. What type of conversation are they having? Give me that in Ecclesiastes 9. Ecclesiasticus, in the Apocrypha now. Ecclesiasticus chapter 9, read verse 15. I'm going to show you what they are doing. This is the law they are applying as they are having a conversation here. It's not just a mindless conversation they are having. No, no, no. This is a lawful conversation according to the commandment. Read it. In the Apocrypha, 9 verse 15. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9 verse 15. Read. Let thy talk be with the wise. Let thy talk be with the wise. Come on. And all thy communication in the law of the Mosai. What was Christ and Nicodemus doing? Their communication was in the law of the Most High. What were they talking about? What it means to be born again. How to repent. How to get your mind right. How to be blameless in the sight of the law. So go back. John 3. Read verse 14 now. John 3, 14. The book of John chapter 3 verse 14. Come on. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Now remember, they are having a discussion. 
He says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, come on. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Read. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Stop right there. You see, Christians don't read these two verses. They just jump to verse 16. They don't read verse 1. They don't read verse 3 to verse 5. They don't explain it either. And if they do read it, they never give the understanding what it means. You understand? They just jump straight to John 3.16. Like they understand it. Keep reading. Verse 16. Verse 16. Read. For God so loved the world mm. that he gave his only begotten son. Come on. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So they say, you see, when you read the color of Christ, they take you here. They say, no, but color doesn't matter. John 3.16. Even if they don't say John 3.16, we can see the spirit they are rolling with. The background, pro, the background demon that's running is John 3.16. Yeah, so the minute they open their mouth, they say, oh, damn. They've been bewitched by John 3.16. Let's give you the understanding. What does verse 14 say? They say, I don't know. Wait, you don't know? Two verses above it, you don't know what it says? No, I don't. So how can you say you understand verse 16 there? No, I just, I just do. It was given to me by revelation. That's what they say. So those are delusions. Those are fairy tales of Christianity. Now, read verse 16 one more again. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Read. For God so loved the world Come on. that he gave his only begotten son, uh -huh. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, let's read verse 14 to understand this. Christ and Nicodemus, they are talking here. Come on. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 14. Read. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, mm. even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So this is English 101. Even so. The word even so means the same way. Just like. You know what this is called in English? It's called a similitude. Let's get it. Hosea 12 and 10. In the Bible it's called a similitude. God calls it a similitude. It says even so. Meaning the same way. Hosea chapter 12 and 10. You look for Hosea. You find Daniel. You find Hosea. The book of Daniel. Okay. Hosea chapter 12 verse 10. Listen good. The book of Hosea chapter 12 verse 10. Come on. I have also spoken by the prophets. He says, I have spoken by the prophets. Come on. And I have multiplied visions. I have multiplied visions. And used similitudes. I have done what now? And used similitudes. I have used similitudes. Come on. By the ministry of the prophets. That's why. It says he has used similitudes by the ministries of the prophets. So that's what we are understanding here that Oh, the Lord, this is a simile truth. So go back to John 3, verse 14 again. John 3, 14. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 14. Come on. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Stop. So in order for you to know what Moses did in the wilderness, you must read where it's written what Moses did in the wilderness. Because you need to know where it's written. Because Christ is what he's taking you back to the Old Testament. He says, as, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, meaning the same way Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, Christ also must, what? He also must be lifted up. The question you must ask yourself first is, who was in the wilderness with Moses? That's the first question you ask yourself. He says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up? Question. Who was in the wilderness with Moses? That's the first question you ask the Christian who's deluded and living in a fairy tale world. Give me that in... Um, give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Let's see who was in the wilderness with Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1. Let's get there. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1. Come on. These be the ways which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness. In the what? In the wilderness. So if you don't read the Old Testament, you're not going to understand what's being said. You understand? So now, we know who was in the wilderness with Moses. The 12 tribes of Israel. Now go back to John 3. John 3 verse 14. Again. The book of John chapter 3 verse 14. Come on. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So now let's get the history of what happened in the wilderness with Moses and the children of Israel. Now we know who was in the wilderness with Moses. Now go to Numbers 21, 
Verse 5. Pay close attention here. You understand? Pay very close attention to the words that are being used. Comprehension is very key. Numbers 21. Read verse 5. The book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 5. Come on. And the people spake against God mm -hmm. and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? To die in the what? To die in the wilderness. So they are in the wilderness at this time. Read on. For there is no bread, mm. neither is there any water. And our soul loathed this light bread. So this is our forefathers and foremothers speaking here. They says we hate this bread. You cannot, you see, our people, are, we have the spirit of ungratefulness. You understand? We have this forgetful spirit. You understand that? Already they are saying they hate the bread. Because they were delivered out of Egypt. They were complaining. They got delivered. Now when they are in the wilderness, we complaining. You understand? Now watch this. Now jump up to verse 2 and 3. The book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 2. Watch this. And Israel. And what? And Israel. So this is who was with Moses in the wilderness. Israel. Read. Vowed a vow unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And said, if thou wilt indeed deliver these people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their city. Watch this. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their city. Watch this. And he called the name of the place Omar. Omar. Now jump down to verse 5. So now we know who are the people that speak against God and against Moses. Who are they? The Israelites. Okay, verse 5 again. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have he brought us up out of Egypt? To die in the wilderness, mm. but there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathed this like bread. You see that thing? Now, what is the bread? This bread that they say they hate. Give me Exodus 16 and 1. You see how people are is people are sick, man. You cause listen, because you think you remember, you know why they were turning against Moses? They were saying it's Moses' fault. Remember, you are in the world before you come into this truth. You are out there, you're making money, life is good, you don't have to live a strict life. Then you meet the prophets on the streets or online. Then you come into the congregation. Now you begin to learn, or, oh, by the way, you have a business, you are trading on the Sabbath, you have to stop doing that. You, you see that thing? You used to buy on the Sabbath, go to the malls with your family, that has to stop. You used to cook and buy on the Sabbath, that needs to stop. So now you start to realize, wait a minute, ever since I came into this truth, I'm broke. You see that? You start to complain. What was, what, what, what was our people doing during this time? They were doing the same thing. They were saying, you, you brought us out of Egypt, now we're starving. That's the same thing. Men and women left us out of this congregation. They went back into the world because you know why? The Bible was too cool for them. The Bible was cramping their style. So they went back and walked no more with them. You see that? That's what they did. Now, watch this. Number 16 and 1. Read that. No, Exodus, I'm sorry. Exodus 16 and 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 16, verse 1. I just want to touch on the bread a little bit. Because they loaded, they say, our soul loaded this bread. Read. And they took their journey from Eli mm. and all the congregation of the children of Israel. And all the what? And all the congregation of the children of Israel. There's only one congregation in the Bible. The children of Israel. Read came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month, after their departing out of the land of Egypt. Now jump down to verse 4. Watch this. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. He says, I will do what? I will rain bread from heaven for you. Come on. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. Go ahead. That I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. You see that? So now already they were complaining of this bread. You understand that? We all, yes, they were already complaining of the bread. Man. Read. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in. Mm. And it shall be twice as much as they get a day. So that's the bread. That's the unleavened bread that the Lord rained down from heaven. We didn't have to work for it. You understand? We were complaining about that too. I mean, listen, and the nations know this about us. Even at the jobs, they know it. That's why you notice whenever black people come together, the white men always show up to, uh, to come and see what you're talking about. Hey, use English, guys. Yes, hey, speak English, guys. Because now they are wondering, 
either there is either there's a there's a revolt about to happen they're about to overthrow the slave master or guess what they are planning on how to destroy from within so the white man is always worried when he see black people gather together at the job you understand aha uh -huh, because what we are known of murmuring you know how they know because the heathens they read this book they read about us and what we did in the past they say they did it in the past they are bound to repeat it so make sure you watch them you understand that right okay now go back numbers 21 read verse 6 the book of numbers chapter 21 verse 6 come on and the lord sent fiery serpents among the people stop it says the lord sent fiery serpents among the what among the people in verse 5 he says the people speak against god and against moses verse 6 says the lord sent fiery serpents meaning poisonous snakes among the people he's still calling them the people you see that right read right? And they beat the people. And they beat the people. Watch this, go ahead. And much people of Israel died. So who's the people? Israel. You understand that, right? The people is Israel. Keep reading. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, So who's the people? Israel is the people. Read. We have seen. Mm. For we have spoken against the Lord. Read. And against thee. Pray unto the Lord. That he take away the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Who's the people? The Israelites. Right? So it says Moses prayed for the people. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 8. Verse 8. Mm. And the Lord said unto Moses. Come on. Make thee a fiery serpent. And set it up. And set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone. Stop. Who's everyone? The people. Who's the people? The Israelites. I want you to take note of those words that are being used here. The people and everyone. Read. That everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Stop right there. Go back to John 3, 14. Pay close attention. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 14. Come on. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. That's, that's what we read in verse 8. What the Lord commanded Moses says, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. There's that, that snake that you see on the ambulance, they get it from here. Exactly. Read. Even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. You see that? It says what? Even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. Come on. That whosoever. Stop. So, keep reading. Believeth in him, should not perish, but have eternal life. What way did we read in there? Verse 15 again. The, the book of John, chapter 3, verse 15. Come on. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Soldiers, soldier, basically, stand up. Answer the question. Who, that was the, what word is noticeable in there? Whosoever. Okay. So where did we read it? Yes, sir, we read it in Numbers, Numbers 21, sir, verse, verse 9. No. Go back. You're not paying attention. Stand up. Now read verse 8 again. Numbers 21, verse 8. We haven't read verse 9 yet. Verse 8, one more again. The book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 8. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it up, and set it upon a pole. Read. And it shall come to pass, that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. Now go back to John. John 3, verse 15 again. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 15. Come on. That whosoever believeth in him, should not perish, but have eternal life. You have the answer now? Yes, sir. What's the answer? It's, uh, now give us the correlation then. Yes, sir. Speak louder, man. Yes, sir. Shalom, sir. Hey, shalom. Yes, sir. In Numbers uh, 21, verse 8, the most high uses everyone. He uses the word everyone. Yes, and then in John? In John, it says whosoever. That's it. That's it. It's the same thing. Yes, sir. So who's the everyone in Numbers? Whosoever. No, no, no. Who's everyone in Numbers? Yes. Who's the whosoever in John? The of in the wilderness that was in Mo with Moses. Yes, sir. Oh, please. Have a seat. Have a seat. So I'm trying to, I'm going to show, I'm showing you that the words are very important. When you read, don't just be skipping over the words. Every word is important up here. You understand? So now, go back. Uh, Numbers 21, verse 8. The book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 8. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come on. Make thee a fiery serpent, 
and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon so it, so that everyone that is beaten, when he looketh upon it, go ahead, shall live. Shall what? Shall live. Shall have eternal life. You see that, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass mm -hmm. and put it upon a pole. Watch this. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. When he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Go ahead. Verse 10. And the children of Israel. And the what? And the children of Israel. Come on. Set forward and pitched it upon. Now, the, the subject is the children of Israel. So go back to John 3. Read verse 14 again. The book of John chapter 3 verse 14. Read. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness to who? Everyone. The people. The children of Israel. You understand that, right? Read. Even so. The same way he did it in the wilderness and the people looked upon the serpent and when they believed that it would heal them, it healed them. Because what? What was being exercised there? Faith. Them looking upon it, did it heal them? No. But the belief that it would, that was what healed them, which is the faith. Read. Even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. You see that? Even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now, let's, let me ask the question. So, so now, um, it's a rhetorical question. It says, must the Son of Man be lifted up? The question is, who was the Son of Man lifted up for and to? That's the question. Remember, the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness to who? To the people of the Jews, the Israelites in Numbers 21. It says the same way, the Son of Man also must be lifted up, but it doesn't say to who. But it's already telling you in the verse. It says the same way. I guess it's already telling you. But let's get some more on that. Acts 2.29. No, Acts 5. Verse 29. Acts 5 is 29. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 5 verse 29. Listen good. Then Peter and the other apostles. Listen good. It says Peter and the other apostles. So it wasn't just the apostle Peter only. No, it was the rest of the apostles that believed this. Read. And that said this. Read. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, mm -hmm. We ought to obey God rather than men. We ought to obey God rather than men. Which men they were not ought to obey? The white men during this time. The same way we must, and even so, we must obey God rather than the white men in this time that we're living in. Because during that time of the book of Acts, who was ruling? Rome. So in this time when we are living in, we beg, who's ruling? Rome, which is America. The extension of ancient Rome. That's America. You understand? Read. The God of our fathers mm, raised up Jesus. You see, listen to the words. The God of our fathers. He didn't say the God of all nations. He said the God of our fathers. Read. Raised up Jesus. He did what now? Raised up Jesus. Stop. Find me another word of the word raised. So, John, stand up and give us the answer. It is the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. So, you give me what we read, this word. Where can we find this word in the New Testament? Shalom. Hey, Shalom. Yes, sir. Uh, Speak louder, man. Come on. Shalom, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I was thinking about what we read in John 3, 14. Even so, the raised will be lifted up. Okay, all okay. praises. Get it? John 3, 14. Keep standing. So it says, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Now read that. The book of John chapter 3 verse 14. Come on. And as Moses lifted up the serpent. Stop. As Moses did what? Lifted up. Do, did what? Lifted up. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. As Moses lifted up. Read. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Uh -huh. Even so. Even so. The same way. Go ahead. Must. The Son of Man be lifted up. You see, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. Go back to Acts 5. Go, you have a seat? Acts 5, verse 29 again. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. No, verse 30. Come on. Verse 30. Read. The God of our fathers 
raised up Jesus. Lifted up. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Read. Whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Stop. Whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Remember what the Lord told Moses to do? Numbers 21 verse 8. Listen good. Listen to what the Lord told Moses to do. Come on. And the, the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verse 8. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Make thee a fiery serpent, mm -hmm. and set it upon a pole. On a tree. And set it upon a pole. That's it. On a pole, on a tree. Come on. And it shall come to pass. Read. That everyone that is beaten. And who's everyone? Whosoever <laughs> believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Come on. When he looketh upon it, mm -hmm. shall leave. Shall what? Shall leave. So go back. X5, verse 31 now. We're going to see how he was lifted up. The book of X, chapter 5, verse 31. So now, listen good. He hath God exalted. He hath God exalted. Come on. With his right hand. Read. To be a prince and a savior. Remember, it says, Whosoever looketh upon, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Right? Read. He hath God exalted with his right hand. To be a prince and a savior. Uh -huh. For to give repentance to Israel. Stop right there. He says what? For to give repentance to Israel. No, to all nations on earth. To Israel. To the 12 tribes of Israel, come on. And forgiveness of sins. Stop. So, go back to John 3 verse 14 and 15 again. Read them together now. The book of John chapter 3 verse 14. Come on. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Read. Even so must the son of man be lifted up. Stop. To who? Who must he be lifted up to? To forgive, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. That's what it means. Go ahead. That whosoever. Who's the whosoever? The children of Israel. Read. Believeth in him. Whosoever looketh upon a pole. Read. Should not perish. They will not die. Go ahead. But have eternal life. Shall live when they are beaten by a snake. Read. Watch this. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Stop. He says what? For God so loved the world that he what? That he gave his only begotten son. Stop. Who did he give his only begotten son to? Because that's the question. I have not forgotten about that world part. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who did he give his only begotten son to? That is the question. Read that verse again. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Read. For God so loved the world. Stop. Let's deal with the world now. Okay. The book of Isaiah 45, verse 17. Isaiah 45 verse 17. Let's see who the world is. It says, for God so loved the world. The word didn't say love. It says loved. So the question is, who did God love in the past? You see, the words are important. For God so loved. L-O-V-E-D. Loved. Past tense. Read again. Come on. Isaiah. Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. Watch this. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. But Israel, but Israel shall be what? But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Stop. What is the word shall? Is that in, what is it? Adjective. Is a pronoun. What is it? Future, is future it right? tense. Is the future tense, right? The word shall? Yes, sir. Okay. Shall means what? Yes, sir. The future, future. Yes, sir. right? Okay. So read that again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. Read. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. So what is Isaiah doing? Stand up if you know the answer. What is Isaiah doing? Hey, Shalom. He's prophesying. That's why it says, so, hey, what? Read that verse again. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. Read. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. But Israel shall be saved in the what? In the Lord. In the Lord, come on. With an everlasting salvation. With an everlasting salvation, come on. You shall not be ashamed. Read. No confounded. Mm -hmm. World without end. Stop. Now, what, when it says world without end, what does that mean? When it says world without end, what does it mean? It says we shall not be ashamed, no confounded, world without end. We know Israel is a world. We are a world. So the world that John 3.16 is talking about, Christ is talking about, is talking about the world of Israel. 
You talk, talk, talk about everybody on earth, you talk about the world of the Israelites. Shalom. When is this world without end? What does that mean? Without the part, without end, that part. Yes. We're going to rule the nations forever. That's what it means. World without end. Okay, have a seat. Okay. Read that again, Isaiah 45, 17. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, 17. Read. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord mm -hmm. with an everlasting salvation. Come on. He shall not be ashamed, nor confounded. World without end. So Israel, we are a world that is going to rule forever. Isaiah is prophesying about that. You understand? Okay. Now give me the book of John 18, verse 20. We're still dealing with the world. Because remember... Today you have the entertainment world. You've got the animal world. Is it talk about all worlds? They talk about the world of sports. Is it the world of uh, fashion also? No. So there's different worlds on this earth. The world that the Lord is interested in is the world of the Israelites. Now read the Bible. John 18 verse 20. Yes, sir. The book of John, chapter 18, verse 20. Read. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. He says he spake openly to the what? I spake openly to the world. Read. I ever taught in the synagogues and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. Whether the what? Whither the Jews always resort. He says the world is where the Jews always resorted. That's where he taught. The world he taught is the world of the Jews. That's what he's telling you. Come on. And in secret have I said nothing. That's it. So Christ is letting you know the world that he taught always was the world of the Jews. You know where this comes from? The world. He says the, the only world that Christ was teaching was the world of the Jews. Give me the book of Ezekiel. I'm going to show you that the prophets, they always spoke the same thing. Ezekiel 3. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 4. Watch this. Because you learn this Bible, you must go and teach your people. That's what it means. You learn the Bible, you must go and teach your people. Read it. Ezekiel 3 and 4. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 4. Listen good. And he said unto me, mm -hmm. son of man, go, go, get thee unto the house of Israel. No, all nations. Go, get thee unto the house of Israel. That's why it says, for God so loved the world. Because the most said God, he loved the world, he loved the Israelites so much. That he sent his only begotten son unto them to die for them. Read. And speak with my ways unto them. Uh -huh. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. He says, I'm not sending you to the nations that the, the, the people of a strange speech, mean the people that are not your people. I'm only sending you to the world of your people. That's why it says, I'm not sending you to a people of a strange speech. Read that again, come on. The book, of Isaiah, the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 5. Read. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech. Read. And of a hard language. Watch this. But to the house of Israel. He says, but I'm sending you to the house of Israel. Read. Not to many, not to many people of a strange speech. Uh -huh. And of a hard language. Go ahead. Whose ways thou can, canst not understand. Surely, had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, I'm not, because this is John 3, 16 here. Christ was, he says, I speak openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue whether the Jews always resort. So he never taught the other nations. He taught the Israelites. So that's why we also, we send to the, our people only. We don't teach the other nations this book. What for? They are not, they are, they are, they are, this, they are not a part of this. You understand? This is the children's bread. So the children must first eat. And after the children are full, everybody else can have. We the children, this is the bread. Understand that, man. Go ahead. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, mm -hmm. for they will not hearken unto me. <laughs> Read. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. You see, they say we stubborn and rebellious. But the key is, Ezekiel was given the same mission. That go thee to the house of Israel. Don't teach nobody else. That means the prophets will know where Israel is. In order for the prophets to know where to go to teach. You see that? The prophets will know who Israel is. 
Understand that, man. Now watch this. Um, give me the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 1. No, 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 that's it on that. Go back to John 3.16. We explain the world. I just wanted to touch on that. Because actually, you know what? I know. There's a Christian who's going to say, yeah, yeah, but you explain the world. But what about First John? Let's go there. You see, I know a Christian right now. They'll be thinking, mm, I got you here, nigga. I got you. No, you don't. Watch this. First John 2. First John. First John 2. Verse 1. Listen good here. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. My little children, mm. these things write I unto you. Come on. That ye see not. And if any man see, we have, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. You see, the Christians, they abuse this verse right here. Mm. They say we are the grace. Go ahead. Come on. And he is the propitiation for our sins. Watch this. And not for ours only. Not for ours only. Remember, when he says not for ours only, he's not talking about all Israel. No, he's talking about the tribe of Judah. Not for ours only. Go ahead. But also for the sins of the whole world. So right there, you see a Christian, you say, we see, he says the whole world. That means everybody in it. Let's get the understanding, Christian. You don't understand. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon 18. Wisdom of Solomon chapter, this is in the Apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18. Read verse 24. Listen good. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18 verse 24. Come on. For in the long garment. For in the what? For in the long garment. Come on. Was the whole world. Was the what? Was the whole world. Read. And in the four rows of the stones mm. was the glory of the Father's graven, mm. and, and thy majesty upon the diadem of his head. Read that verse again. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 24. Watch this. For in the long garment mm. was the whole world. In the long garment of our forefather Aaron, now, was the what? Was the whole world. Read. And in the four rows of the stones. In the what now? And in the four rows of the stones Read. was the glory of the Father's grave. Was the glory of the Father's grave. Come on. And thy majesty upon the diadem of his head. So now, what we're reading here is, King Solomon is letting us know. He says, in the long garment was the whole world. Whose garment? What garment is this? And who is be, who's being referenced here? Who is King Solomon talking about? He says, because in the long garment was the whole world. And in the four rows of stones was the glory of the Father's graven. Mm. Let's get the understanding. Go to the book of Exodus 28. That's why you must read this book. Exodus 28 verse 15. Listen good. You know what? Start with Exodus 28. Yeah, Exodus 28. Um, read verse 1. The book of Exodus, chapter 28, verse 1. Watch this. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother. He says you must take who? And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother. Take Aaron your brother. Come on. And his sons with him mm -hmm. from among the children of Israel. Read. That he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Come on. Even Aaron, Nadab, Nadab Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. Come on. Aaron's sons. And thou shalt make and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron. He says, brother. You must make holy garments for Aaron, your brother. Come on. For glory mm. and for beauty. For glory and for beauty. He says, Make holy garments for glory and for beauty. You understand? The garments that we put on. See, see, you see how we, we dressed up? Yes, that's what he's going into. Okay? Now jump down. Let me see, let me see. Mm, read verse 4. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And these are the garments which shall. Which they shall make a breastplate mm. and an ephod, a robe and a broidered coat, a mitre and a girdle. A girdle, that's a, a belt. belt. That's the belt. You see brothers wearing belts around their waist? That's a girdle. Go ahead. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron. For thy who? Brother. For Aaron, thy brother. Go ahead. And his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Now jump down to verse 15 now. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work. Mm. After the work of the ephod, thou shalt make it. Read. Of gold, of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twined linen, shalt thou make it. Read. Four square, it shall, it shall be being doubled, as pan shall be the length thereof. 
and a span shall be the breadth thereof. That means the length and the breadth were equal. Were equal in measure. Watch this. Go ahead. And, and thou shalt set it, and thou shalt set in it settings of stones. Mm, you, shall, you shall what now? And in that thou Hold on. In the long robe was the whole world. Remember what we read in Wisdom of Solomon? Yes, sir. In the long garment was the what? Was the whole world. He's going to tell you what the whole world is. Keep reading. And thou shalt set in it settings of stone, mm -hmm. even four rows of stone. Uh -huh. The first row shall be a sardius, Read. a topaz, mm. and a carbuncle. Mm. This shall be the first row. Read. The second row shall be an emerald, mm. a sapphire, and a diamond. These are precious stones right here. Read. And the third row, a lugar, a lugar, and an agate. And an amethyst, mm -hmm. and the fourth row a barrel, mm -hmm. and an onyx, and a jasper. Read. They shall be set in gold in their enclosing. Mm, that's some beautiful stuff right there, man. Come on, read on. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel. Stop right there. Stop right there. Go back to wisdom of Solomon. We coming back right here. So you see, when you do this with a Christian, they're going to say, you see, mm, no, but you can't be going all over. No, no, no. You sit down and be quiet. Now read the Bible, man. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 24. Watch this. For in the long garment was the whole world. In the what now? For in the long garment was the whole world. Read. And in the four rows of the stone. We just read the four rows of the stones. In the four rows of the stones, come on. Was the glory of the Father's grave. Was the what? Was the glory of the Father's grave. Go back to Exodus 28. Read verse 21 again. The book of Exodus, chapter 28, verse 21. Read. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel. You see that? The stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel. Come on. Twelve, according to their names, mm -hmm. like the engravings of a signet. Mm. Everyone with his name shall be according to the twelve tribes. Stop right there. So who was the whole world? On the garment. On, of the, the, the stones represented what? The glory of the fathers. Those four rows is four rows of stones, man. Four rows of three, right? Yes, sir. Four, eight, twelve. Yes, sir. They represent the twelve tribes of Israel. So now, go back to Wisdom of Solomon eighteen twenty four. Now again, so we understand what's being said here. Wisdom of Solomon chapter eighteen verse twenty four. Come on. For in the long garment was the whole world. Was the what? Was the whole world. Read. And in the four rows of of the stones. Was the glory of the fathers great? What is the name of the fathers? The twelve tribes of Israel, the twelve sons of Jacob, our fathers. So now go back to First John two and one. First John two. Watch this. First John two verse two. Yes, sir. First book of John, chapter two verse two. Read. And he is the propitiation for our sins. Come on. And not for ours only, mm. but also for the sins of the whole world. So who's the whole world? The 12 tribes of Israel. You see, when you do this, the Christian just going to get mad. So that's why we're going to shut down all those fairy tales and those delusional mindsets that our, for our mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters have in the Christian church. So they, come, they can come in and learn. They must come in up in here and learn. You understand? There's nothing wrong with you know Nicodemus. He went to see Christ by night. They can do the same. <laughs> it's also fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You understand? Now watch this. Go back to John three sixteen again. So don't think you know John three sixteen. No, no, no. We're going deep into it so you understand, so that they cannot come to you some other way when you're on the streets, because they will. Read. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. The world and the whole world. Right? Yes, Read. That he gave his only begotten son. When he says he gave his only begotten son, it means that Christ was only sent to the 12 tribes of Israel and nobody else. Let's read it in the Bible. Hold this. I'm going to show you the precept for this. Give me the book of John, uh, Matthew 18, verse 11. Matthew 18, verse 11. And when you read that Jehovah's Witnesses Bible, you know what they did? They took this verse out that we're about to read. They took the verse out. That's when I started to have suspicions when I was waking up. Or something, you know, many men are going on here. Wait. I'm being bewitched. And when I started asking questions, you know what they told me? 
You know what this Edomad said to me? He said, no, those verses are not inspired of God. Uh -huh. I could not believe what he said, man. I was like, you know, I don't know the Bible, but you know, this thing that he said is really bugging me. I don't know why. And it really was bugging me, man. One time, I was reading the book of, I think it was, was it Proverbs? I think it was Proverbs. And I asked him about something. I was like, hey, you know, I think it was Leviticus. Um, we were talking about the first fruits. They belong to the Lord. So I asked him, I'm like, hey, you know, like the, my first fruits, they say I must give them to the Lord, man. What does this mean? He says, no, but, you know, um, that's the Mosaic law. I didn't know what that meant. That's the Mosaic law and the laws of God are done away with. You know, right there, I'm like, you know, I don't know the Bible, but my God, this don't, I don't, I don't, something in my spirit is like, something is wrong with this statement, man. It's not inspired of God. I was like, what? Secondly, no, the laws of God are done away with. I'm like, mm -mm. I need, no, 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 no. I don't like this thing, but I need to start asking questions, man. What the hell is this guy saying, man? He was starting to get so worried. I'm like, that, that was me, the Lord, Lord, Lord. That was a splinter in my mind. It's like a splinter. You know something's wrong, but you can't point your finger on it. You understand? Mm, the matrix. Yeah, no, it's true. That's the matrix. Yes, sir. You, th there's these questions that you have in the church. It's like, but this doesn't make sense. What's going on? Play the clip. Play the clip of the matrix, man. Morpheus. Neo and Morpheus. Play that clip when it says the blue pill and red pill. Yeah. Because yeah. the certain things that are going on in the Christian church, you're asking questions like, but, you know, I don't know where I can, you know, because another thing that really used to bother me was like, I couldn't, there was no verse I could go to to prove that the, the pastor is wrong. You see, that was my thing. I'm like, you know, I can't say nothing because I don't know where to go. I can't say nothing because I, I, can't, I can't say, no, you're wrong. He's going to say, but where's the Bible? Where's the proof of what you say? So that's why it's important. Watch online, write notes, rehearse the rehearse, rehearse. Because otherwise, because at the beginning, it's going to seem like it's very hard to remember this thing. The more you do it, you'll remember them. Trust me. You'll remember. Don't worry. Now, read the Bible. Where does it go? Matthew 18, Matthew 18 verse 11. Yeah, read that. The book of Matthew chapter 18 verse 11. Listen good. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Stop right there. He said, what did he say? For the Son of Man. Remember, this is Christ speaking. He says, the Son of Man is coming to save that which is lost. Go ahead. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Now, let's see. Who is lost? Matthew 15, 24. I'm looking right at it. Read the verse again. The book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Listen good. But he answered and said, mm -hmm. I am not sent. I am not what? I am not sent. Read. But unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So what is Christ, what is Christ telling you he came for? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Do you have the lost sheep of the house of Moab in the Bible? You will never find it. The lost sheep of the house of Edom? Never. The lost sheep of the house of Canaan? Never. You will never find that anywhere in the Bible, the lost sheep of the house of Ishmael. It doesn't even sound right. Is Ishmael lost? The Arabs, they don't know who they are. They know who they are. The white people, they don't know who they are. They know who they are so much that they are hiding, they are hiding it from everybody else. Is it the white man remembers who he is so much so that he's taking everybody's identity to hide himself? That's how much he knows who he is. So he's not lost. So the only people that are lost is black people. You ask black people who you are, it says, Minanuzu. You ask another black person, who are you? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> Listen, that's what you're going to hear, man. Are we not lost when you hear all these answers, man? We lost. You understand? <laughs> that's what you're going to hear, man, because we lost. You understand? You ask the you ask more where people gonna tell me I'm Chinese, and that's it. You understand? Me I'm Japanese, and full stop. There's no two ways about it. Now nah, they know. Well, we on the other hand, we are so lost. You don't understand what's going on. You understand? So, um, read that again. Matthew fifteen twenty four. The book of Matthew chapter fifteen verse twenty four. Watch this. But he answered and said. I am not sent, 
but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So now, go back to John 3, 16. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Listen good. For God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son. Stop. God so loved the 12 tribes of Israel that he gave his only begotten son unto them. This is what you need to understand. That's what we just read. Remember I said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He is only sent to the 12 tribes of Israel and nobody else. You understand? Go ahead, keep reading. That whosoever believeth in him should not pay. Stop. That whosoever believeth in him. So who's the whosoever? That's the world. In the same verse. The whole world that we read in 1 John 2 and 2. The whosoever is everyone in Numbers 21 verse 8. When he says, everyone that looketh upon a pole should be healed when they get bitten by a poisonous snake. That's the same thing we're reading here. Go ahead. But have everlasting life. Because Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Read Isaiah 45, 17 again. This everlasting life, there's another word that is used in Isaiah. I want to see who's going to recognize what we just read. Read it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. Come on. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Read. With an everlasting salvation. Come on. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. Well without end. Stop. Go back to John 3, 16. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. In fact, in Isaiah is mentioned twice. Read Isaiah again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. Listen good. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. With a what? With an everlasting salvation. Everlasting. Go ahead. He shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. So you see that everlasting salvation, world without end. He's saying the same thing. Go back to John 3, 16. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Read. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, what did he say in Isaiah? So, John. Hello, hey, Shalom. Uh, okay, Shalom, Israel. Uh, it's, uh, in Isaiah, it says everlasting salvation. And in, in the book of John, uh, it says everlasting life. Okay, but there's another word that's been used in Isaiah. Yes, sir. What did he say? The other word is world without end. It says what? World without end. In, in John 3.16? In John 3.16 it says everlasting lives. Hmm. Anybody else? Come on. So, soldier, John, soldier, basically, let me hear you. Okay, okay. You got it? Okay, let me hear you. Yes, sir. You have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. So, there's someone, let me hear you. Yes, sir. Shalom, sir. Hey, shalom. Yes, sir. In John 3.16, what does it say? Yes, John 3, 16 says everlasting life. Okay, and in Isaiah? In Isaiah, it says world without end. Okay, but um, it says world without end, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and in John 3, 16, it says what? Everlasting life. Hmm, he didn't catch it. Where's the business Shalom, sir. Hey, Shalom. Yes, sir. Come on, man. Did you find it? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, he's no longer confident. Did he give the answer that you gave? Okay, let me... No, sir. Okay, let's read. Let's hear it. Yes, sir. I was going to say in Isaiah, it uses everlasting life. Yeah. And then in John 3, 16, it says, shall not perish. Shall not perish. That's it right there. Give him a hand. Oh, pray. Give the Lord a hand. Let's give the Lord a hand. It says, shall not perish. Shall not perish. You see that? Shall not perish. But in Isaiah, it says what? It says everlasting life. Because you are very hot, though. There's something, there's a word in Isaiah that's being used that corresponds with shall not perish. It's right there. Come on, man. Read the Bible. Come on, man. We cannot look at the book. Isaiah 45, 17. Shall not perish. All praises we get that. Read it. Read it out loud. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. There we go. Come on. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord. Read. With an everlasting salvation. Uh -huh. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded, world without end. Now explain. It's 
right there, man. Come on. So, Nehem, did you catch it? I believe so, sir. Okay, stand up and answer the question, man. Help them. Help the brother. Help your brother over there. Yes, sir. Uh, everlasting salvation, sir. Ah, uh, no. No. So, someone, stand up. Let me hear you. Nah. Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Um, in John 3.16, it says, Shall, should not perish. Should not perish, yes. Yes, sir. In uh, Isaiah, it says, World without end. There it is. Give him a hand. Okay. Because remember, the world that is without end is a world that doesn't perish. Yes, sir. Get it? Yes, sir. If it's without end, it don't perish. Yes, sir. If it's with end, we die. Yes, sir. You understand that? I'm going to prove it to you. Give me Genesis 6, verse 5. Remember, this is the world of Adam, right? Listen good. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. Read verse 3 actually. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Listen good. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. Come on. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, uh -huh. for that he also is flesh. Meaning is sinful. Come on. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Stop. What does this mean? Stand up and answer the what, we, what did we just read? Read the verse again. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. Read. But that he also is flesh. Come on. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Stop. Explain. Shalom, sir. Shalom. Yes, sir. It means from now on men shall perish. Yes. Because it's, it's opposed to the future prophecy that says what? Go to the verse. Come on. John chapter 3 verse 16 mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Should not what? Should not perish. Come on. But have everlasting life. So now what we just read he says should not perish. Here the Lord says you're going to perish. Your years will be 120. Now you know what's heavy about that? The chapter before it, how long did they live? Who's the longest living individual? Yes. How long did he live? 969, right? So is that, did he perish? Yes, yes. Up in 969 years is not everlasting life. He still perished. So you see that? So the Lord was letting us know that, listen, man, they were, they were, even though they live forever, but it was not there for, they, they live long, but they didn't live forever. But they live longer than us. Make sense? Oh, please. Have a seat. You get it now? <laughs> oh, please to the most high. Now, give me Romans 9. Remember, go back to John 3.16 again. You see, I want to squeeze every bit of precept out of this verse. John 3.16 again. John chapter 3 verse 16. Come on. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Come on. That he gave his only begotten son. That he did what now? That he gave his only begotten son. Read. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So now it says that he says he gave his only begotten son to who? To the 12 tribes of Israel. So now the question because in the Christian church they say you see color doesn't matter. What do they use? They use the verse we just read. And you know why, where, where they come in, where color doesn't matter coming? He, he, he died for the whole world. For God so loved the world. That means color doesn't, it doesn't matter what color he is. Because he died for the whole world. That's why they say it doesn't matter what color he is. Because he died for everybody. That's why when you ask well, what color is Christ, he says, no, he is multiracial. They say Christ is all colors, is all races. Which individual like that came for me on this earth? Whoever lived in the past, who's it? All colors and all races in one. He don't exist. You understand? Yes, sir. So now, give me Romans 9 and 1. Let's get some more. Who did he come for? Now we're going to go to who did he die for? Hmm. Romans 9 and 1. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I say the truth in Christ. 
I lie not. You see, that's what we've been saying this whole time. The truth in Christ, and we lie not. Read. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. He says his conscience is in the spirit. You understand? Read. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. That's why we keep going over these scriptures over and over. Because we have great heaviness and continual sorrow in our heart. Because of the lies, the fairy tales and the delusions that have been pushed by the Christian church. Read. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. He says, I wish I could done what Christ did. Read. For my brethren. For my what? For my brethren. He says, I wish I could done what Christ did for my brethren. The same way Christ did for, our, for us, I wish I could do the same for my brethren. Read. My kings. My kingsmen, these are my family members. Go ahead. According to the flesh. No, because they are multiracial. According to the flesh. No, according to the flesh. So the apostle Paul is saying, I'm only talking about my people. According to my to the flesh, bloodline. He says, these are the only people I'm concerned with. But in the Christian church, they say the apostle Paul was teaching everybody. No. That means he would be going against Christ. Is Christ divided? No. But that Christianity, that crazy demon, keep reading. Who are Israelites? Stop. So who's Paul's brethren and kinsmen according to the flesh? Who are they? Who are Israelites? He's telling you right there who the apostle Paul's people are. They're Israelites. Which tribe was the apostle Paul from? Huh? Anybody? Shalom. Hey, shalom. It was from the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, prove it. Uh, Romans 11. Which verse? Romans 11, Romans 11 is a huge chapter, man. Which verse are we looking for? Camp 101, putting you on the spot. <laughs> Come on, brothers. What verse is that? Romans 11, verse 1. Oh, praise. Read it. The book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 1. Read. I say that, and God cast away his people, mm -hmm. God forbid. Meaning, no. Go ahead. For I also am an Israelite. For because I also am an Israelite. Go ahead. Of the seed of Abraham. Mm. Of the tribe of Benjamin. So the apostle Paul was from the tribe of Benjamin. You understand? He was a Benjamite. Okay. He was a Benjamite. So, now go back. Romans 9. Have a seat. Romans 9, verse 4 again. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 4. Watch this. Who are Israelites? Who is as his brethren, his kinsmen, according to the flesh, these are Israelites. Read. To whom pertaineth the adoption. Stop right there. It says, to the Israelites belongeth the adoption. What is this adoption that is being spoken of? Give me Galatians 4. Galatians 4 and 4. Watch this. The book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. Mm -hmm. But when the fullness of the time was come, Watch this. God sent forth his son. You see, when did you just read this? John 3.16, go back there. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Listen good. For God so loved the world. The most said God of heaven and earth. He loved the Israelites so much. Go ahead. That he gave his only begotten son. Because of the fullness, the fullness of time was come. Mm -hmm. Get it? Go back. Because the fullness of time was come. Go back. Galatians 4 and 4. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 4. Read. But when the fullness of the time was come, mm -hmm. God sent forth his son. You see that? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. We just read the same thing. Read. Made of a woman. Because he was born from a man and a woman dealing with each other under the laws of marriage. Read. Made under the law. Which law? The law of childbirth, because they say, no, no, Christ popped out of nowhere because the angel had sex with Mary. This is the delusions and the fairy tales of Christianity. Just garbage, man. Read. To redeem them that were under the law. To do what now? To redeem them that were under the law. Stop. To do what? To redeem them that were under the law. So when Christ of the earth was to redeem them that were under the law. So the question is, who was given the law? That's the question. 
to redeem the people because Christ Christ was Christ showed up to come and redeem the people that were under the law. Who was the people that was under the law? Who was the law given to? The children of Israel was given the law. You understand that, right? Who was given the law? Give me Romans 3. You see, this verse is loved by Christians alike. Romans 3 verse 21. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 21. Watch this. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. That's Matthew 17 when Elijah and Moses showed up, being witnessed by the what? The law and the prophets. Keep reading. I know I'm going deep now. Let's just stop there. Go ahead. Even the righteousness of God, mm. which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. Stop. Now jump up to verse 20. This is what I want to get to. Watch this. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law. By the what? By the deeds of the law. Right? There shall not flesh be No, you know what? Start verse 19. Let's start there. Yes, sir. Let's see who was given the law. It says, Christ showed up on the scene to redeem the people that were under the law. Who was given the law? Read that. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 19. Come on. Now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law. Stop right there. It says, whatever, whatsoever the thing said, read it again. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 19. Listen good. Now we know that what that what things soever the law said. Whatsoever the thing the law, the things the law said, whatsoever the law says, go ahead. It said to them who are under the law. So the law only speaks to the people that are under it. Only the people that were given the law, the law pertains to them. You understand? Only the people that this, this book belongs to, everything that's written in the book belongs to them. Nobody else. Read. That every mouth may be stopped. The mouth of Christianity. Read. And all the world may become guilty before God. Because they are evil as hell towards us. Go ahead. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, they shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Read. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. What law is this? The people that were under the law. Give me that in Hebrews 10 and 1. I know I'm getting a little bit deeper now. Just pay close attention and just follow. And reviews, revisit the classes and the, 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 their notes. You're not going to understand this in one go. You, know, you, you, you must read this like you're going to write a test because it is a test. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. The law having a shadow of good things to come. Come on. And not the very image of the thing. Ray. Can never with those sacrifices. Can never with those what? With those sacrifices. With those what? With those sacrifices. Ray. Which were offered year by year continually. Which were what? Which were offered. Stop. Which were what? Which were offered. So what law is this? Sacrifice and offerings. The law of animal sacrifice. Ray. Continually, come on. Continually make the comers the unto perfect. You see, so the law that is being referenced here is the law of animal sacrifice. So it says, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the what? The knowledge of sin. Because the law of animal sacrifice always reminded us that what? We are under sin. It was a, always a reminder. So whatsoever the law saith, it say to them that are under it. So who were the people that were under it? The people that were what? They joined unto the law, the Lord, by what? By means of what? Sacrifice. Give me Hebrews 9, verse 14 and 15. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 14. Watch this. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to God. Right? Purge your conscience from dead works mm -hmm. to serve the living God. Watch this. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. He is the what now? He is the mediator of the New Testament. Who was the mediator of the old? 
Stand up and ask them, don't be inquiring up in here. This is not the Christian church. You have the answer, stand up and give us the answer. <coughs> hey, Shalom. Uh, oh, praises. Moses was the mediator of the Old Testament. Christ is the mediator of the New. Now, have a seat. Go ahead. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 15. Come on. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Watch this. That by means of death, mm -hmm. for the redemption. For the what? For the redemption. Remember what we read in Galatians 4. Don't remember now. We're still in Romans 9. It says what? Or to whom pertaineth the adoption. Remember what you read in Galatians 4 and 4? It says to redeem them. So don't forget. Keep reading. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Right. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. You see that? For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. Who was under the First Testament? Was it everybody? No. Go ahead. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. You see that? They which are called may what now? They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So now he's saying to redeem that we're under the what now? Come on, the verse again. The book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15. For this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. That by means of death, for the redemption of the, transgress <coughs> of the transgressions, that were under the first testament. That were what now? That were under the first testament. That were under the first testament. Go ahead. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now give me Psalms 50 verse 5. Who was under the Old Testament? Who committed sins under the Old Testament and they required to sacrifice? Psalms 50 verse 5. Let's get it. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5. Come on. Gather my saints together unto me. Mm. Those, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Stop right there. So Christ came to what? To redeem the, 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 the transgressions of the people that were under the first testament. Who was under the first testament joined by sacrifice? The 12 tribes of Israel. Now go back to Galatians 4 now. Verse 4 again. Because that adoption was through the mediator of the New Testament. The adoption was not going to take place if there was no New Testament. To be adopted from the old covenant into the new covenant under Christ. From Moses to Christ, the law and the prophets. Mm. Come on. The book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. Read. But when the fullness of the time was come. Read. God sent forth his son, mm. made of a woman. Made of a woman. Made under the law. Made under the what? Made under the law. Right. To redeem them that were under the law. You see that? To redeem them that were under the law. Who was under the law? The Israelites. Go ahead. That we might receive the adoption of sons. That we may what? That we might receive the adoption of sons. Who are those sons? The 12 tribes of Israel. So we, must re we, may, we might redeem the adoption of sons into the what? The new covenant. So we're adopted from the old covenant of animal sacrifice to the new covenant under Christ. Now go back to Romans 9. You see, this right here is a nuclear blast. Romans 9. Romans, listen, man, this is a missile. You understand? Romans 9, read verse, verse 4 again. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 4. Watch this. Who are Israelites? Who are what? Who are Israelites? Come on. To whom pertaineth the adoption? So who, be, who does the adoption belong to? To them that were under the law. To redeem from, to be redeemed from the old covenant to the new covenant. You follow? Yes, sir. Go ahead. And the glory. And the what? And the glory. So the glory of the kingdom belongs to the Israelites. Give me Acts 1 and 6. So the glory of the kingdom belongs to the 12 tribes of Israel. Read it. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 6. Come on. 
when the devil will come together. This is the disciples now. Come on. They asked of him, say, mm. Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? You must we do what now? Will thou at this time Meaning restore? during that time, they wanted Christ to do what? Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So they wanted Christ to restore the kingdom back to us at that time, during the time of Rome. But it wasn't the time yet. We still needed to go into slavery first. You understand? So, um, go back now. The glory of the kingdom belongs to us. Romans 9 verse 4 again. The book of Romans chapter 9 verse 4. Read. Who are Israel? Mm. To whom they their adoption. Come on. And the glory. Mm. And the covenant. And the what? And the covenant. So the old covenant and the new covenant pertains to Israel. But in the Christian church they say... Bella, yeah, under the old covenant, God was only dealing with Israel. In the new covenant under Christ, God is dealing with everybody. Anybody ever heard that? They say in the Christian church, let's see if that's true. Give me Jeremiah 31, verse 35. No, Jeremiah 31, 31. Let's see if that's true. Jeremiah 31, 31. Listen good. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 31. Come on. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, mm. that I will make a new covenant. That I will what? That I will make a new covenant. So this is a prophecy. Through Jeremiah, it says, the days come when I will make a new covenant. Come on. With the house of Israel. No, no, no. Because under Christ now, Christ is dealing with everybody. With the house of Israel. No, the house of Moab. With the house of Israel. Edom. With the house of Israel. Ishmael. With the house of Israel. Hell to the no. With the house of Israel, man. God is not dealing. The new covenant is not with the house of Edom or Moab or Ishmael. Or Ammon. Or the Canaanites. Mm -mm. Read. And with the house of Judah. With the house of Judah. Come on. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. Read. Which my covenant they break. Because it's talking about when they delivered their forefathers out of Egypt, that covenant was broken. But the new covenant under Christ, which is forever kingdom, is the covenant that it go dates back to our forefather Abraham. Understand that. Read. Although I was an husband unto them, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. Read. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts mm. and write it in their hearts. Read. And and will be their God. Read. And they shall be my people. So the old covenant was with the 12 tribes. The new covenant also is with the 12 tribes. It has never changed. Let's go to the New Testament and see if something has changed. Hebrews 8 and 8. Hebrews 8 verse 8. Listen good. The book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8. Come on. For finding fault with them, he said, mm -hmm. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Stop. So this is the new covenant, by the way. And this is the book of Hebrews. And remember, at this time, Christ is gone. Remember, Christ goes, when you read Matthew 15, 24, when Christ says, I'm only come for the house of Israel, they say, yes, that's when he was still alive. After he died, he said, no, it's for everybody. We're reading here after Christ died. Is it for everybody? No. So that's why it says, you shall not be ashamed, nor confounded, world without end. Don't be ashamed that God is only dealing with us. Don't be confused that God is only dealing with us. Don't be feeling sorry for your enemies, man. That God is not dealing with them. To hell with them. Me, I don't care about our enemies, man. They don't care about us. Would the white man switch places with you? N never. Even when a white man is on his deathbed with the millions and millions, he will never switch places with you. Never. So why should we switch places with them? I like where I am. You understand? And I'm okay with where they are. Because the time will come when I will see them no more on this earth. Never, never, ever, ever. Ever, ever. They'll never be here on this earth ever again. Can you believe that? 
Man, this is beautiful. The time will come where I'll never see the white man ever again. Never. He's going to disappear like a dream, a nightmare, because he is one right now. He's the nightmare. We are in this demonic dream, man. You even get paid in this demonic dream. You go to work, you get tired in this dream. The day when the Lord switches us, he's like, wake up. He's like, what the hell? You know, I had a dream, man, when we went into slavery. The white man was ruling over us. What? No way. Yes. Them days are coming, man. I cannot wait for that day. I'm patiently waiting for that thing, man. Keep reading, man. The book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8. Read. For finding fault with them. Go ahead. You know what's crazy about this? You know, the, 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 our bosses at the plantation, if they were to see all these classes, <laughs> man. <laughs> I can tell you now, that will make your life a living hell, man. Because me, I've been through that, actually, at the previous plantations. You know? A Negro who decided, nah, I'm going to tell master. Mm. Mm. You know what this nigga be doing. Mm. You understand? He's Clark Kent. Mm. You understand? Guess what? All of a sudden, the white man is acting somehow, some type of way. You understand? All of a sudden, you are being called for disciplinary hearing for nothing you've done. Like, what the hell? I've never in my life gone into disciplinary. All of a sudden, I'm going to war. Mm. What the hell going on? The Negro. Sure. You understand? So that's why now, even at work, don't talk about the Bible. You know, the, this, this boss of mine, my manager, he tried to talk about it when we were at lunch with another Israelite who don't know he's a Jew. They started talking about the Bible. He's like, no, the Bible is like a made-up story. The Elamite is quiet. He's watching me what I'm going to say. I'm saying nothing. <laughs> so they're like, mm, but the name Elijah, isn't that in the Bible? I'm like, yeah, that's in the Bible. He's like, so, I mean, how far did you get? I'm like, nah, I never made it. Uh, just, you know, Genesis, that's where I ended up. I don't understand this thing anyway. So the white man begins to enter into the conversation to, to explain. I get his proud. I mean, be as one that knoweth and said nothing. I said, kept quiet. So he keeps going into the, the Noah and the Ark and all that. He's like, yeah, you know, I used to look at the Bible as a fairy tale. But, you know, recently I saw some archaeological digs. They show the, the Noah's Ark stuck on Mount Ararat. They found there's some debris of the Noah's Ark. He's like, now I actually believe literally these things happen. Mia said nothing. I said, I'm not going to say nothing. They're like, yeah, but I mean, surely you have to have read somewhere about the name Elijah. I'm like, yeah, it's somewhere in the book of Kings. Yeah, you know, somewhere there. I remember reading it somewhere there, you know. Yeah, that's it. Then the Israel is like, oh, that's where you ended up. Like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's where I ended up. Left it there. Because imagine when you now come in, it's like, no, let me show you. Here's the breakdown. You dumb as hell. Don't be saying stuff like that. Just be quiet. Say nothing. Just act dumb. When they call you, yes, sir. That no say. Yes say no say. That's what you do. Don't try to be up in here trying to be clever. You understand? Don't be doing that. Now, go ahead. Finish that verse, man. I dare Christ. Yes, sir. The book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8. Read. For finding fault with them, he said, mm. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, right? because they continued not in my covenant, mm. and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Right. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, Stop. saith the Lord. So what is the Apostle Paul? Who is he quoting? Jeremiah. He is quoting, we just read this in Jeremiah, the old and the new. Right? I will put my laws into their mind. Because in Jeremiah, what did he say? He says, in their inward parts. Read. And write them in their hearts. Mm. And I will be to, to them a God. Read. And they shall be to me a people. Now let's go back to Romans 9. Romans 9 verse 4 again. The book of Romans chapter 9 verse 4. Go ahead. Who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? Come on. To whom pertaineth the adoption. And the glory and the covenant. The covenant, the old and new covenant belongs to the Israelites. Go ahead. And, and the giving of the law. Who was the law given to? 
the Israelites and the giving of the law. We just read it, Romans 3.19, read it again. We read it earlier. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 19. Read. Now we know that now we know that what things soever the law said, it said to them who are under the law. You see, whatever the law says in this Bible, it belongs to them that were under it. And who's there? That's us, the Israelites. So it says, and the giving of the law, because who was this Bible given to? It wasn't given to all nations. Psalms 147, verse 19. Psalms 147 and 19. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. Read. Right? He showeth his word unto Jacob, mm. his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. Read. Right? He has not dealt so with any nation. Mm. And as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. This is beautiful, man. He says, the giving of the law pertains to the Israelites only. Go back. Romans 9, verse 4 again. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption right. and the glory mm. and the covenant mm. and the giving of the law? So the giving of the law what only pertains or belongs to the Israelites. Okay, go ahead. And the service of God. And the what? And the service of God. Stop. The service of God. Leviticus 25, the last verse. And the service of God. The service of God. Who does the service of God? God's servants. God's servants does the service of God. The service of God. So the servants of God do the service of God. Who are the servants of the Lord? Leviticus 25, the last verse. The book of Leviticus, chapter 25, verse 55. Come on. For unto me the children of Israel are servants. Read. They are my servants whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord your God. Go back to Romans 9, verse 4 again. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Who are Israelites? Who are what? Who, who are Israelites? Ray. To whom pertaineth their adoption. Come on. And the glory. And the what now? And the glory. Ray. And the covenant. Mm. And the giving of the law. And the what? And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. And the service of God. Mm. And the promise. And the what? And the promise. So the, all the promises that are written in this Bible pertain to the Israelites. What are those promises? I'm going to show you just one of the promises. Give me, give me the book of Daniel 7. Daniel chapter 7, man. Daniel chapter 7. Read verse 18. This is the promises. Listen good. Come on. The book of Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. Mm -hmm. But the saints of the Most High. Who are the saints of the Most High? The twelve tribes of Israel, come on, shall take the kingdom. Shall what? Shall take the kingdom. We no, no. We're gonna ask for it. Shall take the kingdom. We're gonna take it by force. You understand that? Understand because the Romans took it, took our kingdom from us by force. So we're gonna ask for it. No, we're not asking for nothing. We're not negotiating. Mm -mm. We take. We're not sharing the kingdom with nobody. Right. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Shall what? Shall take the kingdom. Read. And possess the kingdom forever. Mm. Even forever and ever. You see that? Forever, ever, forever? Yes. Forever, ever, and ever. We're going to take the kingdom and we're going to possess the kingdom forever. Not just possess it, but we're going to rule and live forever without end. You see that, right? Yes, sir. Shall not perish without end. Is the same thing. Jump down to verse 27. Listen good. The book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 27. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom and dominion mm. and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. Under the whole heaven. Go ahead. Shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. You see what belongs to this is the promises man. Read. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Where did we just read this man? Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Read. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. Who are the dominions? All the nations that they are ruling over us now, they're going to bow down on that day. I'm just showing you the examples of those promises, man. Okay? Go back to Romans. Romans 9. Read verse 5 now. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 5. Read. Whose are the fathers? Stop. 
So, so all the things that we just read, the adoption, the glory, the covenant, the giving of the law, the service and the promises, whose are the fathers? Because this was given to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. These are the promises. Let's get that. Luke 1 real quick. Luke 1. Luke chapter 1. Um, read verse 71. Watch this. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 71. Mm. That we should be saved from our enemies. Read. And from the hand of all that hate us. Read. To perform the mercy promised to our father. Remember says, and the promises. The mercy promised to our father. That's why it says, whose are the fathers? Yeah. What are those things that were given, promised to the fathers? We read them. We went over them one by one. Read. And to remember his holy covenant. And to remember his what? And to remember his holy covenant. His holy covenant. We just went into the old and the new covenants. Read. The oath which he swear to our father Abraham. That's it. That's it. The oath that he swear unto our father Abraham. Understand it, man. So, that's why it says, whose are the fathers? Whose are the fathers? Go back. Romans 9, verse 5 again. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 5. Read. Whose are the fathers? Mm -hmm. And of whom, as concerning the flesh. As what? Whose are the fathers? And what now? And of whom what? And of whom, as concerning the flesh. When it says concerning the flesh, meaning concerning your race. As concerning your race, go ahead. Christ came. Christ what? Christ came. Christ what? Christ came. The apostle Paul is letting you know right here who Christ came for. He only came for the Israelites. Listen, man, this right here, listen, this right here, this is a nuclear blast to all Christianity, right here. If you want to destroy Christianity in one verse, you just read Romans 9, verse 4 and 5. You're done. You're done for the day. You understand? Full stop right here. Done. We finished. Read the verse again, man. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 5. Read. Whose are the fathers, mm -hmm. and of whom as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Christ what? Christ came. What's this? Who is over all? All Israel. God bless forever. Amen. Amen to that thing, man. Let's give the Lord a hand. <laughs> Listen, man. Amen to this. Amen to this thing. Amen to this. You need to understand what we just read here, man. This right here, you know why I'm going over this? Romans 9 and 5 was the key, was the point of what we're going over the whole time. I wanted to show you, go back to John 3, 16. I know someone forgot already. I know you forgot why we came here. Read it now. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Listen good. For God so loved the world uh -huh. that he gave his only begotten son. That part right there. That he gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. That's why it says, and what? As concerning the flesh, Christ came. He gave his only begotten son. That's what that means. As concerning the flesh, Christ came. He gave his only begotten son. Read. That whosoever believeth in him mm -hmm. should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's it. That's John 3.16, right there. So, so, I mean, I haven't gone into the Gentiles. You understand? I haven't touched them. Not yet. I still have 11 things to debunk. This was number one of them. You understand? This, this was just going over John 3, 6, to debunk. Basically to make sure that a Christian brother who tried to be combative, they have no loophole. There's no loophole they will find. You understand? There's no loophole they're going to find. So whenever you hear color doesn't matter, you must know. John 3.16 is running in the background. That's how you know. Color doesn't matter. It matters what he did, what he stood for. What color doesn't matter. All that matters is his message. Let's see if they gave you the right message. Give me Second Corinthians 11 real quick. If they gave you the wrong image of Christ, what makes you think they'll give you the right message? Where would they get the right message from if they gave you the wrong image? 
Come on, man. Second Corinthians eleven verse one. Second book of Corinthians chapter eleven verse one. Read. Right. Would to God he could bear with me a little in my body, mm. and indeed bear with me. Watch this. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. Of course. Go ahead. For I have espoused you to one husband, mm. that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. You understand? We must be made holy before Christ. Go ahead. But I fear, mm. lest by any means. Now he's laying said, listen, I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy, but I fear, lest by any means, you Israelites, go ahead. As the serpent beguiled Eve. He says, as the same way that the serpent deceived Eve. Remember, this is a simile truth. As, the, as Moses lifted up the serpent, even so. This is a simile truth. Right? But I fear, mm. as by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtle Through his tricks. Go ahead. So your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Watch this. For if. Because. He says because. The word for means because. Because if. Go ahead. For if he that cometh mm. preaches another Jesus. Because he says, be, the reason why I am I am worried is because if somebody comes and preach another Jesus, go ahead. Whom we have not preached. Stop. Because which Jesus did the apostle Paul and them preach? That's the question. The Christ that the apostle Paul and them taught. The Christ that the apostle John and them taught. Which Christ was it? Because he says, somebody going to come and preach unto you another Jesus whom we have never preached unto you. But he's already giving you the answer who that person will be. The serpent. The serpent will be the spirit, the man that will come and preach you another Jesus unto you that we have never preached unto you. Keep reading. Or if he receive another spirit mm. which he have not received. You see, he started right there. He says, somebody going to come and teach you another Jesus. Which another Jesus is this? Somebody knows the answer and uh, stand up and give us the answer. Where would we go to prove this? It says, for if he cometh, he that cometh preacheth another Jesus. Come on, brothers. Ah, do be, be, be confident. Yes, sir. Hey, Shalom. Uh, the other Jesus says, uh, go to Colossians 2, sir. Uh, which verse is that? Verse, verse 8, sir. Mm, okay, read it, but no. Yeah, this, that's a follow-up after the fact. We were watching the Transformers. There's a chapter we went to. You can go there. That's a clue. We was watching the Transformers and there's a chapter we went to while we were watching the Transformers clip. Which chapter did we read to bring that leap of the Transformers to life? With the Bible. Yes. Uh, shalom, sir. Hey, shalom. Uh, yes, sir. We went to Revelation 13. Uh, we read from 4, 4 and 5, sir. Okay, but we, I want the, the thing. I, the, I said that's a clue. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, another Jesus, man. Yes, Are you crazy? You don't know another Jesus where you can go. The Christian will confound you, man. Yes, sir. Uh, the answer is in Revelation 13 and 3, sir. 13, but that must be a new one. Yo, that might be a new one. 13 verse 3. Uh, me, no. Verse no. Read verse 15 real quick. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 15. Come on. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Yes, the image of the beast. Okay, go ahead. That the image of the beast should both speak mm. and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You see that? So the image of the beast is that white image of Jesus. That's the if we have the we even have a camp poster, man. We have a poster that we use at camp to illustrate to our people. There's another one in Matthew. Come on, brothers. There's another one in Matthew. Matthew 
You know, those miracles. I'm giving you a clue. Okay, read it. Let me hear it. So, read it. Matthew 24, 24. Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 24. Read. For they shall arise, false Christ. That's it right there. For they shall arise, false Christ. Go ahead. And false prophet. That's Christianity is the biggest false prophet on this earth. Read. And shall show great signs and wonders. Mm. In so much that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So in the same chapter also, where would you go? Yes, sir. Uh, Matthew 24, verse 5, sir. Verse 5. Yes, sir. Four, 4 and 5, excuse me. Yeah, read it. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 4. Read. 24. Come on. And Jesus answered and said unto them, mm -hmm. Take heed that no man deceive you. Read. For many shall come in my name, mm. saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive men. You read, see that? So who did that? The men that will come and teach another Jesus. He's going to deceive the whole world. You understand that? Yes, uh-huh. And shall deceive men. Thessalonians also, I mean, you can go, there's many places you can go. In 2 Thessalonians. Okay, have a seat. Um, yeah, 2 Corinthians 11. Yeah, verse 4 again. 2 Book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 4. Right? For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, mm -hmm. or if he receive another spirit. You see, remember, it says. Somebody is going to come and teach you another Jesus whom we have not preached. Because they say color doesn't matter, right? But it does matter because somebody came and changed the original one in the book. Yeah, because if it didn't matter, there wouldn't be a need for them to come and change the original and put up a fake. You understand? It's, it's common logic. It's simple. Read. Read again. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, Read. whom we have not preached. Whom we have not what? Whom we have not preached. Whom we have not preached. Come on. Or if he receive another spirit. Or you receive another spirit. Go ahead. Which he have not received. Mm -hmm. Or another gospel, which he have not accepted. He might well bear with him. Now I want to show you something here. Watch this. It says receive another spirit. This another spirit, remember, they gave you a false image of Christ. Then after they do that, they say color doesn't matter. But whenever they, they, they represent, they show you the image of Christ, is always white. But his color doesn't matter. So, but why are you showing it to me if it doesn't matter? But you keep showing it to me, but you say it don't matter. You see the delusions in Christianity? You understand? So this another spirit, right? Give me that in Timothy. First Timothy 4 and 1. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. Now the spirit speaketh expressly. The spirit speaketh expressly. Come on. That in the latter time. That in the last days. This is where we are right now. Come on. Some shall depart from the faith. We have many that departed from this faith and walk no more with us. Right? Giving heed to seducing spirit. So that's the spirit. You see when it says, if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, if he that preacheth another spirit, this another spirit, what kind of spirit is it? Seducing spirit. It's a seducing spirit. Go ahead. And doctrines of devil. That's Christianity. So when it says another, because remember, this seducing, what type of spirit is this? It's a seductive spirit. So what are these seductive spirit teaches? He says the laws of God are done away with. We are under grace. You don't, got, you don't have to keep no laws because we are under grace. That's a seducing spirit, man. Because you know why? You're teaching the people to depart from the laws of God. When you say 
The laws of God are done away with. That means you don't have to what You can steal. It's okay now. You can lie. It's okay now. Because we're not under the law. The laws are done away with. So you can cheat. It's fine. You don't, we are not under the law. You understand? So, watch this. Give me that uh, Timothy still. 2 Timothy 2 now. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 18. Listen good. 2 book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 18. Watch this. Who concerning the truth that end. You know what? Start at verse, <coughs> verse 16. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 16. Because I'm going to show you the seductive spirit of Christianity here. Go ahead. But shine profane and vain babblings. In Christianity, this is what they teach. They teach profane and vain babblings. Everything they teach in Christianity makes no sense to somebody who has common sense. It makes no sense, man. Read. But they will increase unto more ungodliness. It does not Christianity increase unto more ungodliness. Because remember, during Valentine's Day, we're not black men giving black women flowers, kneeling down and giving black women flowers in the they were doing it. Increasing unto more ungodliness. Easter is coming. What are people gonna be doing? They're gonna be praying, eating pork. You understand? They're gonna be buying their children bunny rabbits and eggs. They are increasing unto more ungodliness. Really? And their word shall eat as doth a canker, mm -hmm. of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Philetus. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Who concerning the truth of her heir. You see that we had we had such one. We had Hymenaeus and Philetus up in here. Who concerning the truth they have what now? Who concerning the truth have heir. They have heard when it concerns this truth. Read. Say mm -hmm. that the resurrection is past already. Meaning Christ died. We don't have to keep no laws. That's a seductive spirit. Read. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 18. Read. Who concerning the truth and heir, mm. saying that the resurrection is past already. Because they say, no, Christ died. We don't have to keep any laws. The laws of God are done away with. Read. And overthrow the faith of some. And they've overthrown the faith of some. Mm. That's what they've done. That's why most people don't want to go to church anymore. Because Christianity has overthrown the faith of many of our people. Now, when we come with the Bible, they're like, nah, I don't want to hear that because they don't know what's written in this book. Because they never, they were never taught anything in the Christian church, nothing. Today, they can apply to their personal lives, nothing. You understand? So go back to, um, go back to, where was it? Second Corinthians 11. Verse 4 again. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 4. Mm. For he, he that cometh, preaches another Jesus. That's Caesar Bourget. Another Jesus is Caesar Bourget, the white image of Jesus. Read. Whom we have not preached. Because the apostles, they never taught a white Jesus. Read. Or he, he receive another spirit. A seducing spirit. Read. Which he have not received. Go ahead. Or another gospel. Or another what? Or another gospel. That's Christianity. Christianity is another gospel, man. Christianity is a doctrine of devils. And it's another gospel. Give me Galatians, hold that. Galatians 1, verse 6. Another gospel. This is what it means when it says another gospel. Because in the Christian church, they teach another gospel. But you know what they do to convince the people that that's the right gospel? You know that what they come with? They come with the Bible. Because in the Christian church, they have the Bible with them. And they read, they will read a verse. When you read it, you see it too. But you don't understand it. That's why it's so seductive. It's a seducing spirit, man. Read it. The book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 6. Listen good. I marvel that he has soon so removed. He has so soon removed. I marvel that he has so, so soon removed. From him that called you into the grace of Christ. He says, I marvel, I meaning I'm appalled. Or how did you get so quickly removed? You understand? From him that called you into the grace of Christ. Unto what? Unto another gospel. Christianity. We had brothers and sisters in here who they, they made it seem like they believed in Christ. But what happened? They did not. They were soon removed from him that called them unto the grace of Christ and they were removed into another gospel. Christianity. The meaning they went back. They went back to worship white Jesus. Read. Which is not another. 
You see, he says, but this new, this another gospel is not another. You know why? Because they come with the Bible too. That's why it's so seductive. Because they, when you read the Bible, they say, that's why, you, you ever notice, when we are at camp, and the, a Christian who's got the evil spirit on them, whenever they talk, they will just reference scriptures, but they don't want you to read them. Yeah. They say, no, but I know the scripture, we can just talk about it. No. You know why they don't want you to talk about it? Because Satan is inside of them. Because Satan knows, the minute we read it, there's words in there that you need to be careful of. Those words is how you're going to slay that demon inside of them. That's why when you bring out the scripture, they say, no, I know the scripture already. No, no, we, we're going to read it though. When you begin to read it, because the devil is in the details, that's what they say in the world. Ne? Yeah, the minute you start to get into the details, that's when you start there. That's when the devil in them start to realize when you go into the details, they're like, oh, now I'm getting caught. Now, that's why they don't want you to read it. That's why in the Christian church, the white man is creating new versions of the Bible. New King James, NIV, American Standard Nonsense, American This, and the New Queen's English. Whatever, whatever, whatever. They never stick to the KJV, the 1611. The one that says I'm black. The one that doesn't say I'm dark. Hmm? Read that Bible again. Verse 4 again. No, no, verse 6. One more again. The book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 6. Read. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. Come on. Unto another gospel. The another gospel is Christianity. But watch this. Come on. Which is not another. Meaning it's not another because they come with the Bible to seduce you. That's why our people are so hooked in the Christian church. Because why? The white man knows that this Bible belongs to us. But now what he does is that he knows our people, anything that has to do with the Bible, they will flock to it. Because their spirits, our spirits are, are tied to this book. You understand? So now the white man is taking advantage of that thing. You know how he has done it? Romans 10. Romans chapter 10. Read verse 1. You see, here's another precept you can use to who salvation is for. Listen good. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 1. Read. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Read. For I bear them record. He says that them is Israel. He says, I bear Israel record that what? That they might, that they have a zeal of God. You ever see our people in the Christian church? They have a zeal. They say, I love God. I love you. See the black men be crying up in there. They have a zeal of God, but what? But not according to knowledge. And that's the problem. They have a zeal of God, but it's not according to knowledge. It's not according to as it is written. It's according to their feelings. Exactly how we started this class. He said, don't lean on your own understanding. But our people in the Christian church, they believe in God according to their own feelings. It's not according to knowledge, but it's according to feelings. So it's a feelings-based doctrine. You understand? It's not a Bible-based, it's a feelings-based. John 7, 24. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 24. Read. Judge not according to their appearance, mm. but judge righteous judgment. So what did we just read here? We just read what we read in 1 Samuel. That's the precept that we read in first. It says, judge righteous judgment. Judging righteously means you use the law, not your feelings, to make proper judgments. You understand? Okay. So I just give you an example. When you, the minute you start to correct a brother or sister, they're going to say, no, but God looks at me. That's why in the Christian church, they like to say, God knows my heart. Where do you think they get it from? And guess what? Let's say, let's say, another thing, another way of dealing with this. Let's go back. First Samuel 16. First Samuel 16, verse 7. Read it again. First book of Samuel, chapter 16, verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, mm. because I have refused it. For the Lord seeth not as men see it. Read. For men looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Now, now, what I want you to understand here, who's the subject? 
Israel, the Lord is choosing a new king in Israel. Who's that? King David, the son of Jesse. So, so remember, in context, this is who, who is this talking about? King David. Who's to be chosen to be king, right? Right? Uh -huh. Watch this. Give me the book of Acts. Is there's many ways to deal with this, man. Give me the book of Acts, man. Yeah. Give me Acts chapter 13. Acts 13. X13, um, read verse 21. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 13, verse 21. Watch this. And afterward, they desired a king. They did what now? They desired a king. Ray. And God and God gave unto them Saul, the son of Cis. The son of Cis, meaning the son of Kish. Go ahead. A man of the tribe of Benjamin mm. by the space of 40 years. Now watch this. Look, go ahead. And when he had removed it, he raised up and he raised up unto them David to be their king. He raised up David to be their king. Come on. To whom also he gave testimonies and said, I have found David the son of Jesse. I have found David the son of Jesse. Remember, this is the history of 1 Samuel 16, right? Right? A man after my own heart. Mm -hmm. Which shall fulfill all my will. Stop right there. So you ask the sister or brother, say, wait, is your is 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 your heart after the heart of the Lord? Ask them. Because here is saying, a man after my own heart. He says, The Lord does not look on the outward appearance, he looketh on the heart. Whose heart? David's. And David's heart was after the Lord's heart. So, sister or brother, is your heart after the Lord's heart? Guess what they're going to say? They're going to say yes. <laughs> you understand? They're going to tell you yes. They be lying. Because what we're reading here, you see what happened? So, there's many ways of dealing with this. So, I just went there to show you that whenever you start to do this, guess what? Because now you're challenging their beliefs. Because remember, the Lord is telling you, no, it's not about feelings. It's about what is written, right? Go back to Galatians now. 1 verse 6. The book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. Right? I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. Come on. Unto another gospel. Right? Which is not another. Which is not another gospel. Come on. But there be some. There be some that trouble. You. But there be some that trouble you. You know who troubling us? The Christian church. They are troubling us, man. The Christian church are troubling us. You know why? Because they are using the Bible to as a hustle. They use the Bible as a hustle, and guess what? They overthrow the faith of some. Read. Right? And would pervert the gospel of Christ. They perverting the gospel. So that's why when, when the Bible says um, you are not under the law but you are under grace, they say, you see, license to sin. That's how they look at it. Go ahead. The book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 8. Right. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, Lest he, let him be accursed. Meaning they must be there bewitched. He said, we or any other or any other angel or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than the which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. Meaning don't let nobody teach you anything that is not written in this book. If they are, he says, let them be accursed. They must be bewitched. They want to be with everybody else, Muslim. Now watch this. Now, now, when you've done all this, they're going to say, no, but that's your interpretation. That's the next thing that's coming. But let's deal with the grace first. Give me Ephesians 2 and 8. It's fine. We can read that one. The grace business. Because that's how Christian pastors make money. In the grace business. Now read it. 
Uh -huh. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Go ahead. Not of what? Not of what? Not of what? Go ahead. Lest any man should boast. So now, when you observe the Sabbath, they say, no, those are the works. Don't boast that you're keeping the Sabbath. You understand? When you put on fringes, they say, no, no, it's not of works. It's by faith. When you grow a beard, they say, no, it's not of works. It's by... They don't know what the works is making reference to. What are these works? And who are the Ephesians? Part two is loading. Eh? There's a whole lot that I need to cover, man. I'm not going to finish it today. I can tell you right now. Okay? But watch this. Let's just deal with grace. What is grace? Titus 2. There's a lot I need to go through to explain that, but let me just go to Titus 2, just to keep it simple. Titus 2, read verse 11. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Reason good. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Stop. You see, right here, a Christian will say, you see, it's all men. He says, you see, grace is for everybody. That's, the way, that's where they're going to take you. Read it again, verse 11. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Mm -hmm. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Has the what now? Has appeared to all men. Stop. So it says, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Who is this all men? Jump down to verse 14. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 14. Listen good. Who gave himself for us mm. that we might... Re that ye might redeem us from all iniquity. Stop. We just read this. He may redeem us from all iniquity. Meaning what? From the, for, from the transgressions that are past. That are in the Old Testament. Was everybody under the Old Covenant? No. Read. And purify unto himself a peculiar people. Mm. Zealous. Zealous of God of good works. So who are all these? He says for all men. The all men is a peculiar people who were redeemed from all iniquity. Who's all these people? Everyone. The people. Whosoever. You see that? Everyone, the people, whosoever. But let's read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 2. Come on. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. That's it right there. Go ahead. And the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. Mm. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. You see that? So who's the peculiar people? The 12 tribes of Israel, if you read Deuteronomy 1 and 1. So go back to Titus 2, verse 11. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Come on. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So who's the all men? The all men is the peculiar people in Deuteronomy 14 and 2. Read. Teaching us then, denying and godliness. Stop. So the purpose of grace is to teach us to deny ungodliness, to deny the flesh of what it wants. Read. And worldly lust. So grace is supposed to teach you to deny worldly lusts. Read. We should live soberly. So grace must teach you to not be a drunkard. Read. Righteously. So grace must teach you to live righteously. Come on. And God. And what? And God. Come on. In this present world. In 2024, grace is supposed to teach you to live righteously. So what is grace supposed to teach you what? To keep the commandments. Grace is not licensed to break the laws of God. No. It's an opportunity. It's a, it's a, it's a what? The most that God is giving you a time for you to do what? To practice to keep his commandments. That's what grace is for. But not in the Christian church. Grace is for license to sin. That's in the Christian church. Understand it. Okay. Galatians 2.16. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Read. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. You see, now, now this part of the works of the law here. Ish. Okay, read that again, verse 16. I'll just explain it like this. I'm about to close out. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Mm. Even 
Even we have believed in Jesus Christ. Come on. That we might be justified by the faith of Christ mm -hmm. and not by the works of the law. Watch this. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So, so what is this talking about? Because when we do things, when we apply ourselves, the Christian church says, nobody, you don't have faith. No, we have faith. But we prove our faith by our works. You understand? So now in the Christian church, they have faith in nothing. They are dead because they have faith, but they have no works. So guess what? It means nothing what they are doing. By the way, they are not doing nothing. So it means nothing what they are saying. You understand? But when it says justified, the justification is talking about forgiveness. The Lord is saying you're not going to get forgiveness by the works of the law. What are the works of the law? What is that? Give me the book of Hebrews 10. I'm going to show you what is the works of the law. Hebrews 10, verse 4. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 4. Go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. That's the works of the law. The works of the law is that when you sinned, when you told a lie, you go into the priest, the priest will tell you what animal to bring in order for the, his, the, the, animal, uh, the animal's blood to be spilled so your sins can be forgiven. So now, we poor women, you know how many times we, 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 we falter? So how many animals are you going to bring? We have no money. So these are the, the works of the law is when you bring, the, the, when you bring the, the, the bulls and the goats for the sacrifices to be performed so your sins may be atoned. You understand? So that's the works of the law, which we no longer do. Because we are no longer under the law of animal sacrifice. Read again verse 4. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world. When Christ came into the world. He said, mm -hmm. sacrifice and offer. So and now he's telling you what is the blood of bulls and goats. What is the blood of bulls or what does it pertain to? He's making reference to what? The sacrifice and what? Sacrifice and offering. Uh -huh. Thou wouldest not. Read. But a body as thou prepared me. Meaning the body of Christ. Come on. In burnt offering. That's the works of the flesh. Burnt offerings. And sacrifices for sin. Mm -hmm. Thou hast had no pleasure. So the Lord had no pleasure in that anymore. The burnt offerings. The meat offerings. You understand that? The sin offerings. The drink offerings. The Lord does the works of the law. Is not talking about to no, know you're no longer supposed to obey, thou shalt not lie. No, it doesn't mean, but in the Christian church, that's what the pastors are saying. Or when he says the works of the law, it means that whenever you are you think you can apply, don't lie, don't, 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 don't pe uh, uh, commit adultery, don't steal, don't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. He's not talking about that, he's talking about you. Performing those bent meat and drink and sin offerings, which we cannot do anymore. That's the works of the law. Is there anybody that wants to perform the works of the law? You're not going to be justified because the temple is not even standing. How are you going to be justified if you bring those animals because the temple is no longer standing? That was only fine when the temple was still standing, we were still in Jerusalem and we could sacrifice until we could no longer do it after 70 AD when the temple was completely destroyed. You understand? Read. Go back to Galatians. Galatians 2. Verse 17. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 17. Read. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ. It says, but while we seek to be justified by Christ, meaning while we seek to be forgiven by Christ, if we seek forgiveness under Christ, I we seek Justification under Christ now. So the Christian pastor or the Christian churchgoer who wants to be justified or forgiven under Christ, how does he or he or she do it? Then, I get they said the works of the law, you will not be justified. That's fine. But the law has been referenced as the law of animal sacrifice. Yeah. So now when you sin under Christ, how do you get justified then? 
Because yes, we're under Christ. We agree. We're under Christ. So under Christ, how do we get forgiveness of sins under Christ? Because under the law of animal sacrifice, we knew you had to bring a goat, a turtle dove, you know, an oxen, a ram, a bullock. You would bring that. So under Christ, what you bring? Read again, verse 17. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 17. Uh -huh. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, mm. we ourselves also are found sinners. We found, we found ourselves breaking the laws under Christ. So what must we do to come out of that? Read. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? So did Christ give you license to sin now that you are under him? Did he give you permission to break the laws now that you are under Christ? What did the Bible say? God forbid. Meaning, no. Christ didn't give you license to break his laws now that we are no longer under the law of animal sacrifice. Read. For if I build again the things which, did, which I destroyed. If I build again the things I destroyed, meaning what? I sin again now. Because remember, when I came in at the beginning, I was, I, repent, I was repenting. Now I'm going back to my sins. You're building again the things you destroy. Meaning you go back into your sin. What must you do? I make myself a transgressor. You make yourself a transgressor, a sinner. Go ahead. For, for through the law, I'm dead to the law. You see that it says, for through the law, I'm dead to the law. What law? The law of animal sacrifice. Read. That I might live unto God. But that I may live unto God. Meaning now, under the faith that I now have. Because remember, under the old covenant, what, what we, we put our faith in what? In the animal that we needed to be sacrificed. Under Christ now, we put our faith in who? In Christ's sacrifice. I get back then, we put our faith in the animal that was to be sacrificed because it was a shadow of things to come. We were practicing. Now that we are under Christ, we put our faith in Christ's sacrifice now. Not under the animal. So therefore, the Christian church, they don't believe on Christ. Because they keep sinning over and over. So they, that means that they should be bringing a bullock over and over. And they would have to bring, build again the temple. That means Christ's sacrifice is now in vain. You see, Christians don't believe on Christ. They believe in Satan. So give me Matthew 4.17. We will close it out with this. Matthew 4, 17. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 17. Come on. From that time, Jesus began to preach and Read. to say, Read. Repent. Do what? Repent. Do what? Repent. Do what? Repent. Repent. Come on. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So with that, we say, Shalom, O and Christ bless you, O praises to the Lord. O praises. Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you.